Season 2, episode number 13 of the PlayStation Collectors Podcast. And tonight, we welcome back Joe, aka Collector Fanatic 101, and TJ Beam to the show. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up, guys? Thanks for coming back. By popular You're demand. Welcome. Thanks for having yeah, us. It's been a while since you've been on, but it's great to have you both on together. Indeed. Yeah, I think I was like episode I don't know, 18, and Joe might have been early... 15 or something. Yeah, I think it was like episode nine and episode six. Or yeah, it was like, yeah. it was pretty early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you guys are like OG founders of the PSC collectors and like OG <coughs> members of the podcast. There you go. Like honorary yeah. royalty. Yeah. OG for everything. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I actually just uh, rejoined the Facebook group recently. <laughs> Randomly. No, it was, um, you came back and everyone was excited to see you. They thought you were getting back in the <laughs> Oh, yo, welcome home, welcome home. I'm like, oh, I'm just hanging them out. I'm not collecting. <laughs> totally no sold. But now, TJ, it's been a few months since we've seen you. What have you been up to, man? Last time we spoke to you, you were making <clears throat> videos at graveyards. Yeah, I do them on uh, TikTok now. I took them off. I don't do them on YouTube anymore. I do them just TikTok, just historical videos. But uh, as you know, I started a uh, another channel with a good mate of mine, um, a wrestling channel. And uh, that kind of went nuts straight away, and we got monetized after six videos. And just uh, yeah, that I'm I'm only editing on that. I'm not doing any. You don't need to hear my voice on the videos. I'm not doing any voiceovers or anything. I just do all the editing. But super fun. I've always been addicted to wrestling, like my mate. So once we found a, we've been talking for years. Like what what's a side hustle we can do together? And, and like wrestling was staring at us in the face for years. And then all of a sudden we're like, hey, I don't know, let's do a wrestling channel. <laughs> are, you talking about, like, are you going over like uh, like American, like WWF kind of like wrestling? Kind of an old school. At the moment, we're only doing like top eight countdowns just to sort of dip, dip yeah. our feet. But um, I'm, I'm told Figsy early on planning on relocating to Melbourne. Yeah, there's some of our videos. Um, yeah relocating to melbourne in the new year and uh we've got some huge huge plans that involve some uh overseas travel and and all sorts of really good stuff planned so my mate that's doing it with me has had a wrestling promotion before and he's a former wrestler so so yeah we're gonna hit the ground running and when i go down to melbourne and um hopefully it all takes off we've got some uh really good stuff planned wrestle savage it's called if anyone wants to Come and check it out. It's not a plug to subscribe by all means because wrestling's hmm. you gotta you gotta be a fan, but uh it's awesome, man. Yeah. I will say if you are a wrestling fan, it is like top quality videos on YouTube. It's just like <clears throat> wrestle cultaholics or anything like that else. It's good stuff. So definitely check it out. Yeah, it's TJ, a lot of fun to do. Editing skills are um ten out of ten. Good work. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah. Did you see the um the new WWF Legends uh, N64 ROM hack that um, RGT85 was talking about. That looks yeah. sick, man. Honestly, yeah. I love the N64 wrestling game. So um, We were just talking about it last night. I, I ring my mate um, Rad every night on the in the truck and talk about the channel. And he was 
telling me about a few little updates that come through. Yeah, for someone, for people who love the N64 wrestling games, it's unbelievable. Oh, hell yeah. It's just it was it's everything you've ever wanted in a new wrestling game. Yeah, <laughs> and it's got the it best really roster good. ever. Yeah, the roster. So, like, if you're into, like, you know, late, late 80s, early 90s wrestling, like, oh my God, <laughs> it's got yeah. everybody you want. It's so good. It's almost the greatest selling point about the the, the the game is the the roster they're putting together. Looks yeah. good. I just gotta find oh, out like to hang out with back then. <laughs> I always it's say the cool. um, early two thousands are the best, but then you talk to people who played the nineties games, and they always say now the nineties wrestling games were the best. Well, I, I'm an NC, I'm like I like the N sixty four games, but to me, like here comes the pain was the pinnacle. But it's only just like it. It's a different game to like no mercy no mercy is probably the greatest came away from here comes the pain but no mercy is very arcadey gameplay whereas here comes the pain you can create a create a wrestler and pretend you're a wrestler you know it's just so in depth and that it's two different games but they're both just brilliant and really good so i was telling figsy actually i might um sometime next year when we get settled in maybe we'll uh we'll do a, a wrestling video game podcast because there's plenty of really cool stuff out there that um uh who's that american guy that you had on recently forgive me i can't remember yeah name. steve right to big into wrestling games as well so we can definitely yeah do some kind of fun podcast together it should be good. yeah it might be it might be an interesting little topic but yeah yeah that definitely yeah. would be cool and Joseph, it's been a while since we've seen you, man. What have you been up yeah, to? Yeah, indeed. What, what's that, man? What have you been up to since we've seen you last? So uh, I've been doing a lot of nothing, honestly. I've just been working a lot. Um, like I told you, like before the show, um, I'm getting ready to go to South Korea uh, probably in the next like three weeks. I'll be there for like six months for work. I might go to Japan while I'm over there. I'm really not sure yet. Hopefully I do so I can pick up maybe a few video games while I'm over there um and then when i get back i'll probably get back around like march april and yeah i I don't i don't don't really know that's pretty much all that's been kind of like on my mind is getting ready to leave because i gotta pack for like six months so i'm basically taking like everything that i own with me and then not everything the video game collection is staying but um i gotta pack all my stuff uh for anybody that doesn't know um or anybody that's watched my videos um, in the military and I work on and fly in helicopters. Uh, and that's pretty much what I do. I do all the electronic radar equipment, um, intercommunication system, stuff like that. And yeah. So I thought you were a professional meme creator, Joe. Um, that too. <laughs> I'm that too. Uh, <laughs> I do that on my off hours. It is, his memes are top notch, top notch people. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so that's what I'll be doing. Um, and yeah, I'll be doing that that's for really the next cool. weeks. If I give you a I list mean, of games in Japan, do you mind? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't been over there before, Joe. Do you get much time to hunt the video games while you're over in South Korea? Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like, so like a lot of people think like the military, like we're constantly working. And maybe I'm sure there are people like that, but like, uh, like with my squadron, um, and for anybody that wants to know, just look up the MH-53 Echo uh, Sea Dragon. That's what I work on. I've been working on it for like 17 years. It's my bread and butter. I love it. Uh, it's it's a huge beast. I think it's the biggest, it is the biggest helicopter in the world. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, what, what did you ask me? I told you like my, my memory is a little fried lately, so... Um, so I said, you've been to South Korea before. What's the um, video oh, yeah. game collecting scene like over there? Well, South Korea is weird because it's, like, very hard to find, like, a legit, like, video game store. They'll have, like, like little mom and pop, like, brick and mortar kind of stores. But, like, to actually find, like, a GameStop, you're not going to find that. Now, Japan, Japan is a whole other world because you could walk, like, a block and find five video game stores and then walk down the street um or two doors down and it'll be another video game store but like it's they're not called video game stores so like a big one in japan is called book off and it's just like for selling books but like you go in there and it's just like they have everything and they always have like a crazy video game section the only thing i will say is for like anybody that's like 
in the Xbox, uh, you're pretty much <laughs> out of luck on that because they don't they don't sell it anywhere. <laughs> Standard V. <man>. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd be all right. All right, next one. Actually, I think uh, didn't. Didn't I randomly see recently? Maybe it was a while ago, but didn't one of the girls that was a regular on Metal Jesus just relocate to Japan for the for the? Yeah, yeah, like Kenzie Kel- lives over in Japan now. I've got some did she re- like completely relocate, or did she just go over there? Yeah, um, yeah, her and her it? husband live over there now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's actually crazy what Joe said about Xbox. So, like, I don't know if it's still like that, like today, but I know a few years ago. Did you guys lose me? Was that yeah, yeah. was that like the the stream? I'm sorry. I guess my internet's like a little spotty because I'm upstairs on the Wi-Fi. So that's all right, Joe. We got you back now. I was saying that no, we, back live, in we live in Australia. Um, like the Xbox Wi-Fi. One was actually been outsold by the PS3 in Japan. That's how crazy the Japan market doesn't do Xbox. Well, right now, well, I mean, the PS4 is outselling like the Xbox Series X and X in Japan. So yeah, yeah, it's crazy to think about. Yeah, has Xbox ever tried to push Japan? Is it or is do they just leave that market alone? Uh, I think they're making a bigger push, especially in like recent, like especially in the last two years, with their insane uh, purchases they've been making. They are trying to make that like footnote in Japan, which I'm sure they will at some point. But like, they're just going to get pushback from Japan because like Japan's like a weird. Uh, like they don't really care about like the, I mean, they care about PlayStation, uh, but like they're more about the mobile gaming. Yeah. The mobile style gaming. And that's why the switch is huge over there. Hmm. I guess that must be similar to the Asian market. Like the Asian market's really big into like the handheld and then the mobile gaming market is huge in countries like the Philippines and Indonesia and India and places like that. Yep. Yeah, no. That's why we always get terrible mobile game versions of everything in the West because they're making all of those for them. And then they're saying, hey, you guys want Diablo mobile? No? Okay, sorry. <laughs> that's <laughs> take away. exactly what that they're not making them for us. They make them for that audience. But then they, they try to say, you know, hey, why not? You know, hey, we're good Americans. You guys want to play phone? And then everyone just says no, pisses on it. And Booze them <laughs> for for I don't know about you. Maybe you guys play a lot of phone games, but I for all the games I own and all the gaming I do, I own I have like no games on my phone. I do no mobile gaming, none whatsoever. The last the last time I played a mobile game was Snake on my Nokia thirty two. I did play a lot of Snake. And, uh, <laughs> turf, That's, turf I'm not even drug I'm, wars. I'm right? not even exaggerating. <laughs> I'm playing uh, Monopoly Go on my phone. If, if for anybody out there, don't download it. It's like it's super addicting, and you end up spending a lot of money on it. That's what they're all. Is, are. is that kind of, is it like Pokemon Go? Where you no, it's not. It's nothing like it. I don't even know why they called it Go. It's Monopoly, but like with like your Facebook friends, and you know you oh, can. That sound fun. <laughs> no, it's, but it's not. It's not like regular Monopoly where like you're all playing. Together. You could just like. You just go around the board, and if you land on certain pieces, like you could steal like your friends' like money or stuff like that. Mm. So, is uh, the handhelds? Do you think is Sony going to make another? Do you, do you believe they're going to make another push in to try to compete with the Switch? Well, or Sony is actually yeah, completely yeah, scared yeah, off yeah. the that. Tony have introduced a new handheld device, but it's kind of just like a fancy um, PlayStation TV. It basically just streams the games on your PS5 on this handheld device. It doesn't come with slots to put in games. It's not going to have cartridges or anything. So that's Sony's future of the handheld market. Everyone just said that's Nintendo leave them alone <laughs> yeah pretty Basically. much because all they did was take a ps5 controller saw it in half and then put like a five inch screen in it oh it's weird yeah, yeah it's called the portal it actually just went up for pre-order i think today it's 199.99 mm. yeah are you is anyone here gonna i ordered try it oh yeah 
Hell yeah, one hundred percent, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I own two PS fives, so I'm gonna have one dedicated have to one. that, just for streaming. So that's what I'm gonna <laughs> use it for. I don't know. Yeah. I'm a sick freak. I got, I got a PS4 that was turned on two years ago. <laughs> I have four PS fours, and I actually want to sell some of them. I I've been doing that. I've been selling a lot of my PS4s. Yeah, I don't need all these. Uh, no. I'm, like, I, I'm just going to keep my Spider-Man PS4 Pro, I think. Because... That's the last one I sold. I sold yeah. it for like seven fifty. dollars So, in, do the new PS5s, are they pushing the, the variant controllers as hard as the PS4 did? Oh, yeah. Like, a- actually, just today, I got my email that my Spider-Man 2 uh, DualShock or DualSense like the PS5 controller, uh, just shipped. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I got that too. Yeah. And they're also pushing all the plates and everything. So. Yeah. Which yeah, actually, what are the plates? I, I saw that the other day. They, they just clip onto the actual console. No. Mm-hmm. So like the plates actually, so the plates on the, like <clears throat> you've seen the normal like white PS5 with the like flares that go out, those detach and you just get, oh. you just get other ones and you just slap them on there. That's what those yeah, are. Yeah, it does go all of them up there. Oh, those, all things in the those are the, the regular ones. So there's the PS5 one, the LeBron James one, and then the Final Fantasy 16 one as well, is, which is I do not have. The LeBron, the LeBron James one, is that like, do people argue that that's not the greatest? I don't like ever? it. <laughs> the second I, greatest I, of all time, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to argue with you. So, I'm not so they've, they've created another collecting niche by just releasing these. Uh, do you collect them, Joe, or do you? Are you just mm-hmm. get them randomly? Um, oh, I I get them randomly, but I do. So I don't know. I just have a feeling like those will be a pain in the ass and very expensive to get down the road, just because they mm-hmm. released the digital version and then the disc version, and then they're gonna have the slims, and I just can't see them producing these things forever. So I just have a feeling like they're going to disappear one day and there's not going to make them anymore for like the disc versions as time goes on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it'll start off like you can't get the red one anymore and then you can't get the camel one anymore. And then like the only will have these ones. I don't know. So I wanted to get them. Um, I think they're cool. Um, and like they I kind said, of I'm, tried that with the PS3 with the, um, they had, do, did you ever see those clip on uh, covers? I had, I had the God of War one. I think it was God of and War. There was a, it was a Final Fantasy one, and oh, um, yeah, like yeah, so they tried to too. kind of tested the market with them, I guess, uh, back then. But I mean, you, it's like those book off stores that we were talking about earlier, and um, you go to Japan, and if you discover Japan sites, like the amount of random shit that they've got for gaming is Insane. ridiculous. <laughs> Insane. No. Accessories, oh, got, and peripherals, that, and stuff. It's a ridiculous. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah, when I was collecting, it. that's that's what people sort of semi knew me as. Like, was collecting these really obscure peripherals. And, so, and yeah, they end up on the quiz on the show, and I gotta freaking guess what they are. It'll be like <laughs> a spoon with a PS2 plug. I'm like, what the hell is that? I don't know. <laughs> that that that's the the Dark Souls trilogy box collection, and it usually goes for around like seven hundred to a thousand on eBay. I think anyway, last time I checked, um, I found that in Tokyo for 180 American dollars. And I literally carried it, that thing around with me because <laughs> I was like, I have to have this. I, I don't know how I'm going to get it home, but I have to have this. So I carried it around all of Tokyo with me like an idiot until I got to my hotel um, and then took it back from because I was living in Nisawa at the time, uh, at some Air Force base and went from Tokyo to Misawa Air Force, and then I went to the basically the UPS store, and then sent it home. Nice, totally worth it because it would have been cheaper than buying it with shipping in America. Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have spent six hundred dollars on that. It's not worth it. Well, one of the first things I ever bought, as mm-hmm. in when I was because before PS3, I was kind of a little bit into collecting PS2 and a bit on PS1. And I found a PS1, a, 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 like a legit Sony branded PS1 cooling fan. And I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And it cost me like $3 or something. And then I got onto the PlayStation collector group 
not the PS3 one, the original PS1, a UK one. And I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, has anyone seen that? And people were like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like they, could, they were like, what is that? I was like, I don't know. I just found it for three bucks and it's a cooling fan for a PS1. And people were like, why do you need a cooling fan for a PS1? PS1. Yeah. And it just clipped onto the side and it was the same texture and everything. It was Sony That's branded. Dope. I was like, yay, I can cool my PS1 now. Thanks, Japan. <laughs> You guys don't play Tekken like I do, apparently. <laughs> so, so like yeah. the one hundred hour Final Fantasy seven sessions when you haven't got a memory card, you need to leave the console on. <laughs> or when you yeah, or, or linking a PS PS one console with another and playing Command and Conquer for four days straight. <laughs> uh Game Boy had a lot of really weird accessories too. If you ever yeah, had any of those back in the day, I used to have some of those monstrosities that would take your yeah. Game Boy. They put like a giant screen and a light and a thing, and it would just be, it'd make it like this huge something. But it was it was, it was sick. To make oh, it yeah. In the back of the turned, station wagon. Turned Lame. into the tar- Doctor Who's TARDIS or something. <laughs> yeah, I, that's how I built my forearm strength trying to hold it. <laughs> that thing was like... Yeah. Kids today pounds. will never understand why we need a light to play on something. Yeah, they also want to understand having to ask your parents for four batteries every 30 minutes. (laughs) Dude, have you ever did anyone ever own a game gear? Those things it destroyed batteries. I don't know if you guys ever had one. They say it was like had the color screen and everything back in the day. Like it would it would just annihilate batteries. And it was like C C batteries or something. Some As four, I think it was four double A's. Might have been two. I think it was six, double. honestly. Cyrus oh in the God. in the chat brought up a, a good one. The Game Boy Color sewing machine. That was like a real <laughs> it was a real thing where you would hook up the Game Boy. Um, it would basically have like certain patterns you could like you know make, and you would put the Game Boy in this certain sewing machine and then press it, and then it would make that pattern with the it sewing. Was six. <laughs> Wow. Pretty cool. But they had yeah. similar things. Like they had the Game Boy camera as well, where you could take a photo and print it out and it would be like this black and white little photo. <laughs> the Game Boy had a lot of weird, um, like add ons. Yeah, that was weird. fun. That's when I liked, you know, that, that back that day, the, that gaming era was amazing because you could just do whatever you wanted. And someone <laughs> would be like, yeah, sure. What the hell? Go for it. Yeah, sounds good. It was just <laughs> every, the Wild West. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> think. Oh. I, sorry, Joe. I, I can't remember. I don't remember Australia ever getting a lot of peripherals for the Game Boy. Really? Back in the day, no. I, like, I wasn't a huge Game Boy player, but I, I carried one everywhere I went. But I wasn't like glued to it. But I don't recall there being um, a lot of stuff available that, I, from my memory, we we had a lot of like um, third party stuff. So places like. Um... Dick Smith and Tandy and stuff would wow sport. Uh, wow, I forget the rest of their name, but they would sell a lot of their own brand stuff that would work for like the Game Boy and different stuff like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. like uh, the magnifying glasses that would like cook onto the screen to make it bigger. I had one of those lights that I attached to lights. it and I used to play yeah. it in the car when it was nighttime. And it, like- yeah, I, I had a light. I remember that. Besides that Game Boy Color sewing machine, they had another one which was kind of weird. Um, and I think, I think her name is Tentacles or something. She owns a, a video game store out in like uh, Washington state. Um, but she recently posted one and it's a, a fishing lure. It's not a fishing lure. It's basically this thing that you throw in the water and then you could see the fish on the Game Boy screen. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a sonar. Like it's like a, a fishing yeah, sonar. Fishing yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a real thing. I've seen that too. Or the Game Boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know why you need that, but you know, if you're really into fishing, and you know, you want the yeah. real thing on the Game Boy, yeah. <laughs> that'd be so amazing. Imagine like some dude like wins some sick bass tournament, and they're like, "What's your secret?" And he's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get the "Game Boy, what's good?" Yeah. They have like it's like a big controversy. They have to ban it and all this other stuff. No Game Boys. That is true. Only in Japan. Only in Japan that thing was makes yeah. sense. It does yeah, well, a lot of the a lot of peripherals that I found when I was searching, especially PS3, were all uh, Japanese exclusive stuff. Yeah. Like the rest of the world just didn't even get a look in with a lot of these weird peripherals. Yeah, PS3. like I got, I I got two PS3 screens that I end up sending to uh, Ben Murbat 
and randomly, like one of them was a legit uh, high definition screen, but one of them was randomly a, a, a um, the, sorry, I, I haven't had much sleep. The, uh, the, like the analog connection. So it was like you're playing a, a high definition PS3, but they're selling you this screen that's only analog. Hmm. I was like, why, why does you anyone have a PS3 that? game? <laughs> yeah, and it was like, oh, look at this. There's a there's a white version, and I found it. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'll get a white version and put it on a white console, and then I got it, and I, I was like, is this analog? And then when I sent it to Ben, he's like, is this analog? Why do you need an analog <laughs> screen for a PS3? Yeah. It was so weird. Is this the original Fat Boy PS3 though did have the analog cords didn't it you could use it hdmi all no this was a these were for slim like they were specially designed for slim they'd actually clip right onto the the that sounds kind of cool if they color match the colored consoles i mean yeah for for, for like shelf candy they'd be cool not for actual functional purpose but i bet they look cool i think that's all ben just does like of all the because i know that he trimmed down a lot of his collection recently and uh one of the things one of the only bulky things that he kept were those two screens because they're just so like when you look at them they're like okay they're cool because they're screens but then when you start reading the boxes on them they're just so obscure especially that analog one like why the hell would you ever even try to release that for a high definition console it's just so yeah he kept them on the as uh shelf candy no, out cool. of all the, the heavy things that he got away yeah <laughs> that leads us to a um, topic that we've got in the title tonight and um that is selling a video game collection and tj you had a large video game collection and you pretty much sold the entire thing so you talk us through the logistics of that how many games you had how long it took and um yeah. okay so i think at my peak i might have i probably peaked at uh 1400 games but I had a lot of really obscure stuff. I, I know that um, a good friend of Figsy and I's, Sean Black, we were sort of going toe to toe with to see who could find the most obscure stuff out there for a while. So I had a lot of weird stuff. Um, but like I, well, I was talking to the, the lads before we went live, um, it was basically around the time that um, Limited Run Games came out and I was. I, I just didn't like where gaming was game collecting was going. I thought they were just money grabbing and it just sort of, I got really disenfranchised. So I just, and at the time I wanted to buy a car and I figured, you know, that could be a good boost. Uh, I was moving into other hobbies. So yeah, I just, just I, I made the, made the decision to sell up and um, the way I went about it was all of the, all of my really good stuff. I gave first choice. i sent private messages to um the bigger collectors because i wanted it to go to a i wanted them to go into a collection i didn't just want to sell it and Mm -hmm. i I probably done myself dirty out of quite a bit of money but i didn't want to i was so out of gaming and collecting i I didn't want to put up with ebay messages low ballers all that i was you just don't leave like, your kids it, at the adoption agency you can give them to a nice home you know what i mean just yeah make sure they send exactly. somewhere nice now, if you care about <clears> your <throat> collection that does matter you don't want yeah, and there was, just there to was get... some stuff at the time like i had a huge slipcover collection and i know that figsy was starting to collect slipcover so he got a lot of my um really obscure slip colors at the time i had like a uh figsy uh, likes slip covers i hear <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, I had a, um, it's been so long, I can't even remember the, uh, a Mafia 2 slipcover from Poland that there wasn't even images online of that thing. It was so obscure. I know that since some people have, have found copies of it and it's not quite as obscure, but that's what I used to love about um, collecting back in the day, that we were at a time where everything was exciting. Like when Joe picked up in his one of his videos, he picked up, El Chavo cart and I was watching it I was like what what is that like it was the biggest thing it was it was crazy so um <clears throat> so a lot of my obscure stuff first choice went to collectors and thankfully a good a, probably a large portion of that actually went to collectors like I, I was lucky enough for guys to put their hands up and say yeah 
I'll give you close to market value or, or, you know, slightly less as part of a deal. So I got really lucky with that. And then I still had quite a bit left over and um, I didn't know what to do with it. I was looking at, like, there was a lot of uh, fillers and a lot of obscure stuff that people just weren't interested in, Japanese copies, Japanese games and such. And uh, Chris at Newcastle reached out and he was like, hey, I want almost everything you own. <laughs> so I, I, I got really mm. lucky and I did a deal because he was he was pushing towards the full set that included the Japanese games and there were certain items in there, certain PS2 consoles that um, like the Ratchet and Clank uh, Aqua console that he was after. So I got really lucky and, and basically offloaded the rest of my collection to um, Chris for a, a good deal that we were both happy with. So I, I consider myself fortunate in the, the speed at which I got rid of it because I think getting rid of a collection is almost probably harder than building a collection. <laughs> it takes more work. That's yeah. definitely for sure. It's easy to go yeah. to a shop and buy something. It's hard to take the time to list it on eBay or to go out and actually sell it. Yeah. Yeah. You want to take a loss. That's the biggest thing. Well, and that's where I decided early. I was like, I know, like I knew that I was dreaming if I thought I was going to make a, make money out of a video game collection. Yeah. Because you're just not, unless you've got a bunch of, rare, rare hen's teeth games, you're just not going to make a, a profit out of a video game collection. So I, I knew straight, I knew early on and I, I decided early on that I was going to take a loss. I was prepared to take a loss as long as the stipulations were met, i.e. these, this pile I want to go to collectors and then this pile I'll sort out and try and sell at another stage and luckily the collectors took this pile and there were chris didn't get shovelware he got a lot of really obscure stuff like he got my uh ps2 virtual reality kit that um you know you, I, you don't even find a boxed copy of that it's rare as rocking horse shit. but so that was in there the ratchet and clank ps2 acra console yeah. stuff like that um so yeah, he he got well and truly got his money's worth. Collectors filled their shelves with uh, some stuff that I'd managed to track down that they couldn't track down or was maybe too expensive. So it worked out really good. But I, I wouldn't like the job um, for someone that sort of really wants to try and get as much money as they possibly can because it would be a mountain. So I think that if you want to get the most you can, like you have to do it like uh, at at um, game shows and flea markets and stuff where you can, you know, sell it in person and not pay fees on eBay and stuff like that. But yeah. it's still a huge time commitment. And, you know, well, it's I not just... going to be sold in one day. You're going to have to do yeah. it. A lot. It's it's a huge time commitment. So if you if, if you don't mind, you, you're paying, you're kind of you're, you're going to give up some money for some convenience. But. It's a lot of convenience. If you can find somebody with a lot of money who wants to buy a huge portion of your collection, mm -hmm. you know, that's it, like you said, there's a huge, there's a value in that because otherwise yeah, it's like, going to take you, it could take you years to sell that uh, over, over the court, you know, separately. So is it worth years of your life and years of time and effort to make this extra money? Probably not. If you have a decent job, dude, <laughs> you make good money. So it, it comes, you know, if you're if you're making good money in real life as an adult, and your time is valuable. You have to like consider that to, to an extent. Yeah, and, and, and that's another thing going into that. Like, uh, if maybe even for new collectors, uh, don't expect to get rich by collecting video games because that's not an investment. Not going to happen. No. Um, do it as a passion, but don't expect to like you know hold on to this and sell it in ten years and make twice as much money that you paid for it. Cause that's probably not going to happen. Now those folks that collected Nintendo games. Yeah. Maybe if, and, but that's like 30 plus years that they held on to those collections, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, and that's and just, how many, what's that? How many of them are, how many of them are there? They're, they're like, you can count them on one hand. The guys that have got those sorts of value. 
Yeah, there's not many of them. And well, they bought their collections a while ago. That's why they're there's so much. Um, yeah, and, and also thirty years of time, the the dollar value has lost half of its value. So even if you've doubled, if your if your thing is worth twice as much, but the money is worth half as much, you haven't made anything. So, for instance, um, you actually lost money because inflation and yes, interest it, it, you missed out on everything. It, it, video game collecting should not be a financial investment. I, it, it can nah. be lucrative for some people. It can sure. be if you treat it as a job or whatever. Yeah. It is, but like I never like ever look at it like, oh yeah, hit it, hit it rich. If, if anything, I expect one day for everyone to go. This fucking dumb, and all of a sudden it's not worth anything, and I'm like, whatever, cool. I can at least finish up my set. <laughs> yeah, or, or I like end up croaking, and then yeah, um, or yeah, yeah. And stuff for like what sells the, it for twenty what bucks. What do with all this stuff? <laughs> um, but I will say, so but she'll put a Craigslist up by games, dollar and maybe, each, and maybe you guys didn't know, uh, especially folks that are watching. Um, before I collected PS3, I've always been a, like a collector of something. Um, but before PS3, I was collecting retro, and I had a lot of retro games. I collected Nintendo. I collected, you know, all the systems, Jaguar, like the Atari Jaguar. I was big on the, uh, collecting for Atari. Uh, the 2600 games, 5200, 7800, uh, the weird Odyssey uh, consoles, Odyssey 3000, 2000, you name it. However, I will say, and this is going back, you know, like 15, 15 years or so ago, uh, I had Bubble Bobble Part 2, and these were like some of the rarest NES games I had, and Little Samson, and I'll never forget it because I paid $80, I think, a piece for those, uh, and I thought that was a crazy amount of money back then, mm -hmm. which it, it kind of was, but now, then that was 15 years ago, going till now, I think Little Samson goes so roughly much, like $10,000. Ten thousand. Like, Eighty box. 10, Do you have, are you talking like a box copy or a loose copy? Or? Uh, I think loose copies are like maybe like four or five thousand. Yeah, yeah. Loose copies are a lot less. But I still, wanted to add to um, TJ's comments about selling it. So I'm on the other side of the perspective where I'm starting to sell some of my collection, and I do eBay full time. So even doing eBay full time, it's still a bit of a burden for me having to sell my collection on there. I've probably sold three hundred games in like six months. You know, it's not a. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, the, I'll tell the dif uh, the difference between where me and Figs, because we started collecting PS3 at almost the same time. I think Figs was like a month ahead of me, and then that's how the PS3 collector group came about because we wanted to branch out and and network and meet people. The difference the difference is that like that's so, difference. I fell out of I fell out of love of collecting. I, I just wasn't interested in it. And it was, it was easier for me. Whereas Figs went on and collected, but now he's, he's actually making his, he's got a job as a video game collector slash reseller. So yeah. you can, you can make a living out of it, but you can't, I don't think you can make money out of your collection. Like I'll, I'll clarify that. Like you can make a living out of video games, and re and buying and selling and collecting, but yeah, I you don't think flip. you'll ever make a profit out of a, a collection, unless it's like yeah. you got a collection of ten that you paid ten bucks for and well, you sell it for twenty. Well, yeah. yeah so <laughs> going back into like my old collection because I sold it like a good probably like fifteen years ago. I still have pictures of it and everything, but luckily, and this is when Craigslist was still like pretty big. Um, I sold a lot of it on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. I had one guy that bought my entire like uh, NES collection. Um, and yeah, it was, it was great. He came by, he gave me cash. I helped him unload it onto his truck and that was it. And then a lot yeah. of it, I was taking a mom and pop shops like, Hey, here's like an Atari 7,800 in its box. What will you give it? Give me for, you know? So I probably took a huge loss because all of that stuff now is like stupid expensive, but I can't look. I can't look at it like that. Like looking back, saying, like because the same yeah. with me. Like some of the games I sold, uh, 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 ten times the value they, that I got for them. If yeah. I had held on for a year or two, I would have been. I would have been able to buy two cars. But I, I can't. I, I'm not one to look back and say that sort of stuff. I randomly found a, a game recently where I'm like, "Figs, do you want all this stuff?" And I put together a box of stuff that he might be able to resell on his thing and like i found a, a game and he's like 
dude, they're going for like 200 bucks at the moment. <laughs> I was like, oh, right. It's just and you're like, this is crap. You can just do whatever you want with it. I'm, I'm like, no, I'll sell it for you and give you the money. <laughs> But it was, but back in the day, like that was literally like a game where I just must have put aside, just go, oh, that probably no one's going to buy that. It was one of the, um, what, what, what game? It was well, like everybody's a, golf six. The everybody's Australian golf six. Version. Just, just randomly put it aside, thinking, yeah, no one's going to buy that. And now it's, it's increased in value. And some of the, some of the games, because I was buying at the time, we were buying, um, Aquanauts Holiday and, uh those level games for like under a hundred dollars but that was still like oh these are the expensive games that was a lot of money like 150 bucks for a ps3 games in 2014 was a lot of money (laughs) yeah so and and like and like i sold them for around that same price because i was lucky enough to because we had the ps3 I suppose I can't speak for other gaming communities, but the PS3 community was such a tight knit, close community. Like those five, four or five years in the collector group, like we became friends, not just sort of people we knew on Facebook. So I was lucky that collectors helped me out by saying, no, it's they're worth this much. I'm I'm at least willing to meet you halfway. Like you give me a decent deal, and I'll meet you the halfway with a decent price. So, and that's one of the keys I think to if you want to if you do want to re, uh, sell your collection is networking with fellow collectors because a you know that your collection is going into another collection where it'll get looked after, and b a collector is sympathetic with another collector and most good guys that are collectors will help you out by saying you know i know the market value let's meet somewhere in the middle as opposed to going to a um putting them on ebay or marketplace where someone Mm -hmm. will be like that's a video game that's only worth 20 bucks yeah yeah Yeah, and then you know, I bet a lot, most people, if you're in a situation they're selling, they may want to be doing it for, you know, a reason they have to, you know, some sort of financial hardship or something. So you can get taken advantage of. So I feel like it is important that if you're in a position, you have to sell your collection, that you have those friends you can be like to get like, you know, something, you, you know, reasonable for it without having it's, to yeah, that, worry about it. That, that's a good point, Joe, because I, I remember I told a few guys that um, with some of the Exia games that I had, all the more obscure games, I made a point of telling them I'm not in a rush to sell these games because when you do that, they automatically go, okay, I'm not going to be able to, like, it's going to be harder to try and scam a good price out of this guy because I'd already made it clear, listen, they're on the market, but I'm not in a rush to get rid of them. I'm just, that's what they're there for. So if selling, if there are games that you don't want to give away, I think that's a good uh, a good plan is to sort of put it out there to say that you know you're not in a desperate position like you don't need this money for a new liver you just decided to move on with your hobby and these are the uh prices of, of the games for sale to stop people because i mean there's 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 too many sharks out there that'll mm-hmm. take advantage of you at the first first option TJ, looking back at everything, have you got any regrets today selling your collection? None, none whatsoever. That's, that's like I'm not, yeah, I, I'm not even. Um, I, if if I have a conversation with Joe or Ben or uh, Cuba or Johnny Cox from all over the world, if I it, like, we don't even talk about gaming. It'll be just a normal conversation about, hey, what's been going on? You know, this, that. Like, I'm so far removed from the. It sounds strange because I'm on a collecting podcast, but it, <laughs> like, I'm so far removed from video game collecting and almost video games in general that, um, yeah, I just don't have any regrets whatsoever. I know that I've done the right thing for me. Like, I'm not, I don't have anything against collectors because I was once a collector. I'm still a collector. Like, I'll always be a collector. I started collecting fucking matchbox Jeeps for Christ's sake. And all of a sudden I've got 900 fucking toy cars. You know what I mean? Like once a, 
once a collector, always a collector. It's just but... fun. It's just fun yeah, to collect it's... things, man. Yeah. Yeah. You hanging out in that PS3 group? I was going to say that earlier. That's dangerous, man. That's like uh, you're going to relapse. You got to be careful. <laughs> I just I was bored one day and I was like, oh, I'll just send a, a, a membership request. <laughs> We've been waiting for you to come back I, for like four years. I got excited. I, I forgot about it, and then all of a sudden I got, I got like sixty notifications. I was like, oh, what's that? And I, I got on there, and I was the, the all the lads from the old days <laughs> giving me shit. Yeah, I think you bring up a good point though that um, you're not in the collecting scene, but you're still coming on this podcast because we still chat like ten years ago when you were collecting. Our relationship still exactly the same as I'm sure. Yeah, it is with all the other collectors and everything. So you don't you you became a collector, but you met you know real friends from that, and that's people that you're gonna know, interact with for the rest of your life. It's a cool community. And that was that was one of the points I made on the last time I was on the podcast was the fact that yeah we we started out collectors but like we all made genuine friends like I, I told a story about um when i went down to kieran's house to pick up a game and the guys invited me in and made me coffee and we sat down for three hours talking like guys don't have to do that when you're just buying a video game off facebook marketplace but because he was a fellow collector like we considered ourselves you know buddies and that was the good. That was the great thing about the the early days, and I'm sure it's the same. I see interactions with guys on the PS3 group now that, although they're different to what we went through, because we were like legit going through a, a discovery period with the PS3, because none of us knew anything about the PS3. It was so like, look at Joe's old videos and Michael Young's old, old videos. Pure they were speculation. And we didn't know where it was going, so it was a, it was a, a journey of discovery in the old collecting um, days. But you know, they ended for me personally, and and oh, yeah, I have no regrets over it. Yeah, it um, definitely was. Um, it was more community based back then. Um, I noticed one thing that isn't the same is um, games were a lot cheaper, and when money was less of a thing, people would help each other out more. So, say someone would discover a game that no one would had, then if it was a regional exclusive, say in Italy, Nicola would get a copy for everyone and everyone would work out the shipping and get a few games and it wouldn't be a drama. It wouldn't be about the money. It would be about the video games where today it's about yeah. the money. And it's, I mean, yeah. I understand because games are more expensive, but I got into video games collecting because I liked video games, not because I wanted to make money. And it's crazy that like, I think about like the collecting group and I think, yeah, that was only a few years ago, but really like, that was like seven years ago. That's a long time. And, yeah. you know, like I still talk to you guys and we started on that. Like, uh, like I started on my YouTube channel and then I met you guys through the collecting group. And yeah, we've been talking pretty much ever since. It's wild. Yeah. <clears throat> but I, 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 I look at the, since I um, rejoined the, the collector group, like I look at the interactions and they look, the guys are having fun at least yeah you know and there's and there's there's new um uh group experts out there that are discovering new st stuff it's to me it's a bit of a reach but at least they're they are discovering new stuff and and they're interacting and they're and they're having fun and and that was kind of why i went back into the ps3 group because i was like, i wonder what's i got curious as to where the the community was at now that basically the, the large proportion of the of the library was discovered and and the prices and values had settled down and people finally knew what the um what the rare games were and we could look back and say oh well joe was correct on that one but you know way off on that one or and just have a bit of fun looking back to oh, see I, was, how I, I was way off on a lot of them you know <laughs> I don't know a lot of them too. <laughs> hey guys, I found this game called Africa. I reckon you should pick it up. <laughs> yeah. so like some of the games I put like on my list, like I thought it would be like, and, and maybe it's not necessarily rare. It's just a shitty game that no one wants. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but not, like you met, you, you touched on it before the podcast, Joe. That was one of the things I really enjoyed about your videos specifically were you weren't um so much speculating you were just like i went out like you did your pickup videos and you were like 
I found this game like it's really obscure and it might have been like that. I remember when you found that um, was it Rock of Ages with the the green guitar cover. Was that what it was called? No, Rock of yeah, um, Rock of the Dead. That's it. Rock, oh, of, the Rock Dead. of the Dead. Yeah, I, I think it was I Rock of the Dead. I don't know if I showed that on one of my videos. I don't remember showing that game. It was it was a game similar to that where it had a really cool cover and you were like, oh, I found this really cool game and it's yeah. and, and like. And those, it was those styles of videos, as opposed to Michael Young was very, um, uh, um, like, this is going to hit in a few years. And he was quite off on a lot of his stuff, too. Yeah. Well, so, like, it was like I was telling you before the show, um, well, usually what I did, because, like, where I'm at in Virginia, um, specifically in uh, Virginia Beach, Chesapeake area, there is so many video game stores around this area. I think we have around like 25 game stops alone Jeez. just in like a, just in like a 20 mile radius or 30 mile radius and then there's a lot of mom and pop shops you know and I would hit up all of these stores like I was like wild like back then like oh it's Friday or it's Saturday I'm going to hit up all of these stores and see what I could find and games like Africa I would be hitting these stores like, you know, once a week or whatever. And I would only find this game one time throughout that whole year. And I'd be like, shit, this game is obscure. What the hell is this? Does anybody know? Yeah. I'm getting nostalgic vibes right now just hearing this. I, I remember this like it was yesterday. Like, like I've, wait, I've been to 20 video game stores in the last few weeks and I've only found this twice. And it's like, all right, that take, must take be rare because there's only four video game stores in my city. <laughs> So we were talking about this earlier, but I guess this triggered TJ. Uh, I had I, I had found this on Amazon, believe it or not, for fifty five US dollars. I think this was in twenty sixteen, um, and it's brand new, brand new sealed. Uh, I haven't seen too many sealed Africa copies, but this is it. And I TJ, had I had that on my watch list for almost a year. <laughs> waiting to pull the trigger and never convinced myself to pull the trigger. And literally, mm. literally, it's one of my favorite collecting stories of all time. Literally, the the day that or the like, I went on to Amazon, I was like, that's it. I'm buying that, that Africa. I'm getting it $55 a day. That was a lot of money back then for a game. Yeah. And I went there and it was no longer in my cart and it was sold out. And I was like, oh, damn it. And then three days later or a week later, this... This guy posts a video going, oh, look, I just picked up. <laughs> I was sitting there like, oh, fuck up. <laughs> Sorry, I just said the real gems are the friends we've collected along the way. That's true. And AJ said, I use Collective Fanatics guides to set up my PS3 game collection. I sold all but my favorite, but I'll always remember collecting in 2017 and 18. That's awesome. Yeah, that's 100% my experience too. So when I started PS3 collecting, I started watching your videos and Figsy's videos um, to build my collection too. And uh, yeah, it really helped because, um, you know, luckily I got in on a lot of those games where the prices were still very reasonable. When your videos were coming out, you were like, you know, hitting it at the right time. And I got them for, you know, I'd say 20% of what they cost now. So thank you. Yeah, it's and that's another thing. Think- Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Joe. No, I was just going to say, like, that's the thing about, you know, I really feel like this hobby, like, there's a huge advantage to being, like, the early bird. That's all I got to say. Like, doing your research and, like, learning about this stuff now, it, it, it's going to save you so much time and money down the road. Like, if you're really yeah. into it, if you're, if you're serious about it, if you don't care and you just want to pick up games and play games and have fun and whatever it is what it is. But if you're, like, really into the hobby, um, I mean... Like, I can't say how awesome it is having these connections and having these resources and having people who are into, like, these certain genres or, or consoles or whatever. These experts, oh, my God, it's so helpful. Like, I, I love James Johnson PS5 videos, man, and all the stuff, like, all that stuff. and Watching the posts that they make or what their pickups are. Because, you know, I'm not going for all that stuff. But for me, I just it's like a, cron- like a, like a catalog of everything that's coming out. And I'm like, oh, this is finally re- released. Because, like, how hard it is to track it all? Like, you know, I see all these games I want, and there's all their pre orders are up, and I'm not pre ordering everything the minute I see it, and then I don't know when it comes out. And then, but like, you know, because we're in these groups and we have these connections and these people post this stuff, it's like, you know, so helpful. I can be like, oh, this release this week, I'll pick this up. 
and uh you know i get this and that's the one i wanted and i don't know i just it's it's awesome so the community i used to uh I used to write stuff down after, as I'm watching Joe's videos or Michael Young's videos because I'd watch them before I'd go out on a, a, a video game hunt to all the stores so that I'm like, oh, yeah, Joe picked that up. I'll, I'll have a look for that. <laughs> and, like, it's crazy, it's crazy to think back. Like, I remember seeing when PS3 was at its lowest, like, and they had the bins of PS3 at the front. I, I used to come across Godzilla copies pretty regularly at, at the especially oh, on the sunshine coast for some reason like there were just godzilla copies there and so like, if you had a known or like you know like ben picked up i remember he got uh it was one of the greatest ps3 calls of all time when he was on the group saying um he he posted a picture of his new siberia collection and he called that very very early he the said 2015 or something up. i remember yeah he made a really early call and he got a couple of copies because there was a whatever the website was that was selling it originally really cheap and but you could get that really cheap but without connections you you're not going to know that so what you were saying joe was like you it's it's great having these connections because when you listen to people and you you're serious about collecting like yeah. if a big collector like ben says pick this game up Siberia like we all went out and picked up a copy of that off that website because it was 35 30 bucks, bucks or something yeah and look at it and, today <laughs> yeah and so we listened to the even though we were experts ourselves we were still listening to uh, um other experts mm -hmm. because that's how you build your collection back in the day like or that's how you do it I suppose if you do it want to do it successfully that you do it today as well by listening mm -hmm. to other people you're not no one's an expert on it but it's great to watch videos and and um take it all in yeah well, it can that, be really helpful that was the yeah. best part of like the early days of the ps3 group and i'm i think we've talked about that before you talked about it the last time you were on the podcast um those early days of like people just posting obscure games like look what i found look what i found and that's why i originally started like my channel was because I was just getting into PS3 collecting or I had started and, you know, Googling stuff, there was no, there was no list. There were no, you know, this is how many PS3 games exist. This is the rare games. There was none of that. And Michael Young had, he was originally the first person to do it. Like, I don't want to take credit. Um, He posted one video and I seen it and you know, it's just him showing his video games. And I was like, I had, I was starting my YouTube channel. And I was like, that's what I'm going to do. PS3 games, rare PS3 your, games. Since your else. first video was like all about you, you put out a thank you to Michael Young. I remember that. Like this video, like it, I, I want to take yeah, a shout out was, to Michael was, Young because I wasn't trying to steal his thunder, um, being the first person to like really step into the ps3 like rare game realm um i just wanted to also do my own thing because like what he was putting out was not what i felt was um the games that i think people should be on the lookout for you know what i mean mm. yeah, well, i had a very similar desire when i did my channel it was basically because you stopped doing videos joe and michael young stopped doing videos and yeah. i was collecting a full set i'm like well I'll just start again and do the full series. And I think I ended up doing like 22 videos on rare and collectible PS3 games, which is absurd. <laughs> I remember you asked me things at the time you were like, you, you we're talking and you were, you were like, oh, I'm thinking about like doing a, a video series on my games. Like, and, and I was like, why are you even thinking about that? Just like, you should, you've, you've got a huge collection. If I had the collection, I'd be, I, I'd be doing stuff like that as well. Cause there was no, I think, when you started Figsy, people had sort of died off on the YouTube PS3. There, there wasn't a lot about after that. If I'm, if my yeah, memory serves me right, like today had stopped. Michael Young had completely disappeared. Um, was it Andrew? I think Andrew had, someone, wasn't doing a lot of. There, was, there were a few. There were a few copycats because I don't remember the dude's name, but like I would put out a video, and like a couple days later he would put out a, a video but of like very almost the same games in in that order too is that a guy in his and, bedroom and he'd and, like open his wardrobe and stuff yeah no, that was 
No, that was Andrew, Andrew Kim was a legend. He was, he was he one was of the awesome. early ones too, where he's like, and he's in his bedroom. He's like, oh, I'm going to show you my pickups. Slide the fucking wardrobe open. The only two are there. <laughs> so I used to tease him about that almost every time I spoke to him. I'd be like, "He's still keeping games in your fucking closet, bro." Hey, I'll be right back. I got to get my charger, my my laptop. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Jay. Yeah. When Jay gets back, we'll um get into the quiz, guys. Sweet. Yeah. So one thing yeah, I'm I'm was... remember how you pointed out like you know collecting for the NES is really profitable now, but it's been 30 years, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one thing I find fascinating too, is that like, I, I still think the interest in collecting PS3, PS4 isn't even remotely close to even started at all. It's not even remotely close. Like it's just, it's just a huge generational thing. And like I said, yeah. it'll be like another 10, 10 years ish until yeah. like the, you know, the gen, the kids who were between the age of eight and 13, during the PS3, yeah. they grew up playing those games. They, you know, once they're in their thirties, all of a sudden that's going to, you know, I think you'll see there's like a more interest in those videos. You'll see like all of a sudden, you know, people start watching your collectible rare videos even more in 10 years. Like I really do. And what, cause by, by then like YouTube will be recommending your videos, I think, you know, because they'll have a lot of views already and you'll already have established yourself as like the, the matter expert on it. Like, I don't know, man. I just feel like uh, you've actually almost nailed it, Joe, but you miss one thing. Kids these days don't have attention spans. So my videos that are actually mm -hmm. trending right now are all um I made shorts like shorts. a year ago on rare and collectible PS3 games. I got one it's getting like three hundred views a day. And I thought it was a terrible video, but it's the content that they want. I had someone comment it on a jumped in a live stream the other day. He's like, when's your next PS3 short coming out? But it was the weirdest comment I've ever heard. Because I got a full series out that you can watch it on. But yeah, the shorts will be but, coming soon. But, but I I think when you say it, it it might kick off in, you know, five or ten years. I think also because like these days there's there's not a lot of new stuff coming out, unknown stuff for, for the Nintendo the old Nintendo consoles. So by that stage, like, because they are still discovering pieces of the PS3 library. So by that mm -hmm. stage, they'll know almost everything out there. Hopefully they'll, it'll be documented somewhere. And I think people will be more comfortable in jumping in, um, into collecting because of, uh, the fact that the library will be, uh, um, like known as well. Flashed out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's all more right. fun. All the work, all the work will be done. Good <laughs> guess. Yeah, awesome. Welcome back, Joe. Well, now that Joe's back, let's get into the quiz, guys. Let's right. do it. It's oh, time to play. Oh, <laughs> we're time to play. <laughs> right, I'm gonna go over the um. The score from chat before we get into it. As you guys know, um, chat plays in our quiz as well. And the way it's going to work is the first person in chat to get five points will win themselves a video game shipped mm -hmm. anywhere in the world. So you guys have to win it. And it's only in the live streams. And to get a point, I need you guys to give me the full title. It has to be the correct title, all the words. Um, so just to give you an update on the score, uh, we've got Windy Corner TV. He's got one point. Uh, Jimmy J's got one point. Jason Trickster's got one point. Banffy's got one point. Cyrus has got one point. Uh, Mario Mario's got one point. And Lulu Girl's got one point as well. So no one's hit two points yet. Now we will bring up chat's question first. So guys, this is just for chat. So chat, your question this week is what is the video game? Uh, we'll leave this one up for about yeah. 10 seconds for you guys, but you've got until the duration of the quiz to answer, guys. And only one person gets the point. So you can help each other or you can keep your information to yourself. All right. Why we're letting chat think about their answer. Who would like to go first today? Uh, I'll file first. All right. TJ is going to be going first. <laughs> Joe, are we going? Joseph, are we going second? And Joe Rabbit, are we going third? Now, once again, Pavel and Sylvan have provided all the questions for today's quiz. So thanks so much, guys. We've got some awesome questions. And let's get into it. Question number one for TJ. All right, question one. 
What game series didn't have their own branded pasta? Is it Sonic, Pac-Man, Metal Gear, or Final Fantasy? Uh, I'll say uh, Final what Fantasy. Fantasy. Incorrect. Just me? <laughs> yes, you. Yeah. I'll say <laughs> Joseph no, and Joe. Like, no, I'll, be Joe, I'll be Joe Red this entire time. Okay. Uh, uh, what, did, what did TJ say? Uh, TJ said Final said... Fantasy. Oh, no, it's Metal Gear. The correct answer is Metal Gear. So we have a Sonic the Hedgehog spaghetti shapes, Pac-Man pasta and spaghetti sauce, and a Final Fantasy pasta sauce with chicken and mushroom. Wow. And before we get into the next question, I can reveal that we have a correct answer from chat. And I believe Cyrus came in first with Zappa 1, Wicked Cricket. So Cyrus is the first person to go to two points. Congratulations. I didn't, I didn't even understand that. I was like, what the hell is that? I'm, I'm, I'm hopeless at those. Uh, We're American, bro. So as soon as I see Cricket, I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> Zappa 1, Wicked Cricket. That was a tough one. But congrats, I'm Cyrus. I never even really heard of that game. <laughs> That's impressive. Uh, Joe, question two. Joseph, this one's for you. All right. Which popular fashion brand has collaborated with Microsoft and made 100 limited edition Xbox Series X consoles? Was it Prada, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, or Balenciaga? Uh, Louis Vuitton. Incorrect. Joe Rad? Just because Bill Gates goes to that island with Mr. Epstein, I'm going to say Balenciaga. <laughs> oh, right. back. Incorrect. Play children's game. Did you have to the steal? You got a 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I go on that theory, then uh, I, I'd almost say the devil wears Prada, but I'll say, I'll say Gucci. Correct answer. And the first point to TJ. It was Prado. Uh, it was sorry. It was Gucci. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Okay, it was Gucci. <laughs> All right. All right, Jared. This one's for you. Question three. Okay. PS3 fighting game includes three mm. fighting games. Which game is oh, not present on. in the compilation? Soul Calibur Four, Soul Calibur Five, Tekken Tag Team Two, or Tekken Six? I own this too. Can I cheat and look over there? <laughs> <laughs> I, think I have to cheat though because the answer isn't here, so I have to just confirm. Oh, <laughs> just trying to remember, dude. Oh no, this is really gonna piss me off because, like I said, I own. It. Um, shit. Soul Caliber Five is not on it. Incorrect. Damn it. Uh, TJ? Uh, I'm going to say, I, I don't think this is one I ever owned, to be honest. I can't remember owning this copy. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I'll say uh, Tekken 6. Incorrect. Joseph for the steal. Oh, man. Between Soul <laughs> Calibur 5 and Tekken Tag I Tournament 2. I think it's Soul Calibur 4 is not on there. Sorry, yeah, Soul Calibur 4. I even tried to trick you there, and you got it right. Correct answer was Soul Calibur 4. What is that? Oh, yeah, I don't have that. God yeah, I don't. damn it. <laughs> so, seriously, <laughs> I'm so yeah, irritated right now. Me. I'm so freaking irritated. Did that, especially after uh, spooling us about being a big Tekken player. We were just show, talking though. about, I, did, I, <laughs> like, I knew it was Soul Calibur, and I got the damn wrong game, too. Like, why would, He's going to laugh that, soon, because there's another question in here that we were talking about, and it's really fucking obscure, so whoever gets just, it, it's going to laugh. Did that, have a, um, did that have a slip cover that was just black? No, that but you're game? thinking of Marvel vs. Capcom for a slip cover. Oh, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, I don't think I ever owned that game. All right, guys, at the end of round one, Joseph's got a lead of two points. TJ's behind on one, and Joe Rad is yet to score. It's still anyone's game. All right, question number four. 
TJ, this one's for you. So I'm going to play some music from a video mm. game, and you have to tell me what video game this is from. If this is like a role-playing game, I'll, yeah, I'll say, um, I don't know. I have no idea, so I'll just say Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> Good guess, but incorrect. Joe, what game is it from? Final Fantasy VII. It was Final Fantasy Seven. <laughs> really good guess. I've never, I've, and I've never played it. There's a bit of uh, bring, bring on the hate, but I've never played it. <laughs> hey, it's all right. All right, Joseph. This one's for you. Question five. What is the name of this device? The iToy. The PS2 iToy. Yeah. That is the PS2 iToy. Correct. Dominating. I'm getting all the easy ones. <laughs> All right, question six. Joe Rad, this one's for you. What word is missing on the cover of this PlayStation themed pasta? He gets the Final Fantasy VII win theme, I guess. <laughs> Fucking pasta. <laughs> Play your pasta. Play your Fucking pasta. A. That's right. <laughs> yeah, baby. I play with my pasta every day, guys. Oh, Wait a minute. Let's go. All right, guys. At the red, end of round two, we'll get a quick score update. So TJ and Joe Rad have both got one point. And Joseph's pushed ahead to four points at the end of two rounds. He's killing it. At, how, many quizzes have, how many quizzes have you won, Joe Rad? Just out of curiosity. A few. A few. I think oh, Joe, a I've got Joe's stats. I can pull it up. Give me one second here. We keep everyone's stats here on the podcast. So if you're a repeat uh, repeat guest, you can um, keep your record going. And I will just confirm that AJ has got the best stats in um, in the quiz. So AJ is the champion. So Joe has played 15 games. He's won eight and lost seven. So he's got a 53% winning record. It's not bad. my goddamn Overwatch record. Damn it. You never <laughs> get out of bronze, bro. All right, sorry. All right, let's move into round three. Uh, so question seven. This one is for TJ. What console is this device for? Did we just talk about this? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> there's my attention span. How dare you call um, my grandmother a console? <laughs> sorry. Uh, the Game Boy? That is, of course, the sewing machine for the Game Boy. I can't believe that we brought it up before the quiz. <laughs> <laughs> that is really random. Oh my God. And I even said, <laughs> what did I say? I said, legit- all these, I said, all these weird things end up as quiz questions. <laughs> all the weird accessories. <laughs> and, it, and it's a legit singer model, too. <laughs> it's not even some cheap-ass fucking... Yeah, yeah, it's a good sewing machine. That's awesome. <laughs> It's just all right, a- Joseph. Question eight. This one is for you. What is common between these three game titles? Uh, lies. The correct answer is the word lies in the title. Yeah, good one. Nice I only I only knew that because of truth of lies, and then we were literally talking before the show of what I was most excited about and it's Mortal Kombat and uh, Lies of P. Yeah, that's, that's, that weird. Weird. that's that weird. Uh, we we talked and... about everything on the quiz before the show started. Yeah, except, ex- <laughs> except, wasn't except, planned. The, except the Final Fantasy win theme. That's true. <laughs> All right, Joe, this one is for you. What is common between these four game titles? What's common between them? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, like, is there like a word missing or just like, I'm confused about this question, so what sir. What is common between these four game titles? What is common about them? The ultimate jester said they're all trash. <laughs> 
I mean, <laughs> Ghost of Shishima is the balls, dude. And Paprium is a good game. What do you mean? I don't understand the question. Like, that's obscure. All, I, I don't see what you mean. Like, what's in common about them? They're all fucking. I don't know. I really have no idea what's asking me. Like, oh, God. I'm moving outside of the box for this one. You think? Dude, I, I literally have legit no idea what this could possibly be asking. You're going to hand it over to TJ? Yeah, go for it, bro. TJ, what is common between these four game titles? I haven't played any of them. Well, also <laughs> correct. That is an answer. <laughs> oh, damn it. Um, no idea. I'll say uh, they all end in no. Um, I have no idea. I've got. I, I can't even think of anything. Same uh, public. Same publishing house. I no, no Not idea. Same publisher, Joseph. What's mm-hmm. common about these four game titles? They all have a male antagonist on the front cover, maybe. So the answer we were looking for, and someone in chat actually got it, is. They're all released in 2020. The, the Sega game was? Yes, yeah, so it must have been a re release, the Genesis game. Oh, wow. Okay. Does anyone know anything no. about that? Paperium is not a right. Re- no, that was like a Kickstarter project that took forever to actually come out. So that was one really? of those, like, yeah, they took, they, they took money from people like a decade ago. <laughs> And they stopped posting for like you know six years, and everyone thought like they got ripped off, and then all of a sudden like, it like showed up. I'd like to post a protest, please. Wow, posting a protest. <laughs> all right, guys, at the end of round three, J Rad's got one point, TJ's moved to two points, but Joseph's killing it with five points. God um, damn it. It's still technically that. possible I'm, for I'm, TJ to come back at this point. You just need I'm to gonna, win. I've, every got, I've got to go into a quiz with an expert. <laughs> All right, TJ, question 10. I'm going to show you two photos. And just like the chat question, you have to work out the title from these two photos. Oh, TJ, this is your question. What? Traffic sign? No idea. Traffic sign. Excellent. And it's a video game title. It's a video game. Um, it, it is five photos, but it's the second lot of four photos all represent the same thing. Hmm. <laughs> Insurance simulator. <laughs> <laughs> you hand this one over to uh, <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea, bro. Sorry. All right, Joseph? I was gonna say traffic report, but I have no I have no idea. I'm kind of oh, I just saw it in the chat. I don't know what it is. No, looking at chat if you haven't answered. I have. I've answered, bro. Jared. Uh, uh, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Yes, no idea. So Chad got this one. It was Hitman Contracts. Mm, that's a good one. And Cyrus is killing it with the answers. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Joseph, this one is for you. It's the same concept. What is the video game from the photos? <laughs> Kane Hair Dog Week? Kane Hair Dog Week? <laughs> 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 Rest, hold on. Rest, hold on. Kane. Hmm. Kane and Lynch, maybe? Full no. title? Oh, yeah. I know what it is. Kane and Lynch, uh, hot dog week. <laughs> <laughs> I have to see Lynch games, but in a 
of course they're like obscured and I can't see them, but that's cheating anyway. Kanan Lynch, I oh man, uh you got this, dog week. Oh almost. I don't know. Kanan Lynch dog week shit. <laughs> dog week shit. Yep. That's I it. <laughs> I can't take that. I'll hand it over to Joe Rad for the steal. Uh, I would say, I'm gonna say Kane and Lynch dog days. Ah, yeah, correct answer was Kane and Lynch dog days. Damn, you had it too, man. <laughs> All right, final question. This one's for Joe Rad. Uh, same concept, Joe. Yeah? <laughs> uh, okay, Spirit King. I. So, what's with the blurred out and the block stuff? Is that like, am I Are supposed to ignore the that, or is that the no, word I'm supposed to be that's focusing the word on? That you're off, though. Okay, okay, yeah, all right, that's what I thought. So, mm. Mm. I know Monkey Island. Monkey Island is correct. Joe takes the point. Nice. After a final push from Joe, we've got a final score of TJ at two points, Joe Rad on three points. But our God, winner God. of the Figsy Quiz goes to Collective <laughs> Fanatic 101. Yeah. Joe, congratulations. <laughs> Far too good. And well done to Cyrus for taking not just this week's chat question, but like half of the questions he got right of the quiz as well. So well done, Cyrus. Your name gets carved into a plaque, like a golden plaque in Pig Figsy's house because you want some. <laughs> There's like Figsy, a you need to, um, pictures. On the quiz, I've been meaning to say you need you need to put up a um you need to get the PS3 trophy sign and, and put the jingle PS3 trophy up to the winner. That'd be cool. <laughs> it would be good. Oh, that's so, a smart idea in general. If we could get like actual like, achievements and just have them in general post up. I used to do things. I used to do it for my uh, for my mate's band. Every time he'd do something, I'd send him like a. Uh, there used to be an app that you could create a trophy on. Because I used to do. Remember on the old days of the PS3 group when we used to have. I used to run monthly themes, and it'd be like, okay, this month we're going to show us your. Um, your fighting games and that's how we learned a lot of the library too was people going oh this is my fighting game collection and you'd be like oh what's that one and then at the end of it for those that participated i'd give them a, a monthly trophy <laughs> <laughs> i got a comment in chat here that cyrus says i actually sold a game to figsy and i doodled my name in a certain page so yeah my name's carved in his house and he doesn't know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to oh, go through yeah. all my games now and try and find every it. single game. He probably will too. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> that's going to, um, that's going to annoy me forever now, Cyrus. <laughs> Don't tell him the game. <laughs> I'm inside your house. This is going to annoy me for like a little while. It <laughs> <laughs> really is. Oh, like, oh yeah. man. I love these games too. I'll be right back, guys. Yeah. Oh, so so I know you say you sold a lot of your collection, TJ. Do you play anything at all? Did you get into emulation to replace your collection? Anything like that? PC? Nothing. Go to the uh, um. If there's an arcade nearby, I'll go and throw coins in an arcade machine. That's cool. That's what I, I that's what I grew up on before. Well before. Mm. Well, even when uh, the Nintendos came out and the, and the early Segas, I was still at the arcade. Throwing mm -hmm. coins into Rygar and uh, uh, House uh, of the Shinobi Dead, and, <laughs> Shinobi and yeah, just the old side scrollers, Shinobi, um, mm -hmm. uh, the old fucking Wonder Boy games, all that okay. stuff. It's awesome, Street Fighter. So yeah, if there's a if there's a good arcade nearby, I'll go and spend a the night there. But gaming wise, not at all. So mm -hmm. uh, bringing that into the conversation. Um, I don't know if it's popular in Australia, um, but like in the U.S., there's been a, like an uptick in them uh, for a good like maybe like four or five years. 
uh, arcade bars. Basically, it's like a bar, but like people have thrown like arcade machines in them now. And we have a couple. Yeah, that here. was. We have a couple here where it's just all retro games. It's not like newer arcades. They have Mortal Kombat three, you know, uh, Pac Man, uh, all of that Galga, and then it's also a bar. I don't know if those were like a thing like down your way. That was one of my plans to. to can you guys hear me? Okay, my AirPods just mm -hmm. died. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that was one of my plans when I sold up. I was part of, before I decided to get a car. I, I wanted to sell. Uh, uh, help fund a uh, me and a mate were going to do a arcade bar, but we were going to do like a, a fighting bar, so all fighting arcades. Kirk call it. We're going to do something like burger fights. That sounds like just... a like a liability. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you serve alcohol and nothing but fighting games. Oh my god! <laughs> well, no, we weren't. We weren't going to sell alcohol. We were just like oh, a, all right. a, a oh. burger joint, but with um, oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, arcades. gotcha. But yeah, there, there's, there's right. certainly. <laughs> They're certainly starting to pop up uh, more and more over here. That's for sure. We got one in my city called Empire Arcade. It's really cool. I actually sold my kiosk to them. The um, One of my buddies, Jason, owns it. And um, he collects pinball machines. And he's got like 15 different kiosks from like um, PS1 to PS4 to um, Dreamcast. He's got a – pretty sure he's got a GameCube, a Wii kiosk, Xbox 360. And he just constantly like rotates them in the bar and – he rotates his pinball machines and he runs an Airbnb in town that's like a um, pinball house. And you can book out this house and it's just full of pinball machines and arcades. And That's awesome. Yeah, it's just so much fun. It's really I'll, cool. I want to get the, the Virtual Boy like kiosk. <laughs> if he could find it, if he could find it. I've only seen one. And that thing looks wild. Look, at, uh, I need to find a photo for you guys, but he got a pickup a few years ago that was like 15 kiosks all at once. It was like 20 grand, but it was like yeah. a once in a lifetime opportunity that you're never yeah. going to come across again. I noticed there's a couple on the marketplace at the moment. There's a guy selling a um, PS2, PS1, PS3 kiosk, all separately, of course, but uh, the PS3 kiosk is pretty shitty condition but the the ps2 kiosk is really nice dj you got a ps3 kiosk for sale i believe soon when i get around to putting it back together but yeah so anyone's in Sydney nearly... looking for a chaos <laughs> reach out to tj yeah. reach out reach out to uh figsy he knows how to contact me but um it's got a uh a hacked ps3 console in it with 30 odd couch co-op games oh yeah nice so, yeah that's awesome yeah. Yeah. So I think that, um, I don't know. It's, I miss arcades, but it's so hard. I was talking about this with actually some of my friends too. But like back in the day, there was always that gap between the home console experience and the arcade experience that always made it exciting to go to arcades because you're getting like a better game. You know what I mean? Like the Shinobi in the arcade was better than the Shinobi at home. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, yeah. it's so hard to recreate that experience. So arcades these days, um, are either just going with the whole retro thing, which like you know I've seen yeah. it be successful, or like we we have like David Buster's. I don't even know if you guys have ever heard of stuff like that. We have like these like big arcades where they have just like massive VR machines, and they have giant arcade machine like Space Invaders that take up like a wall and stuff like that. So that it's still kind of cool. You can, you can go in and have like these experiences you can't have at home, but I think that's like super important if you want to try to push people to get out of their houses it has to be better than the home experience which is why i don't yeah. go to the movies anymore i don't know about you guys but like i got like a 65 inch 4k oled tv surround sound i'm like you gotta get me out of get me to go to the movies it better be something freaking fantastic because i still go to the movies i go to the movies know. like at least twice a month depending on like what the movies are playing so i mean it's well, I mean, like five years <laughs> in my experience just growing up was just out of um I mean, we loved it, but it was also convenience because I grew up on a farm and I had two choices after school. I could either jump on the school bus and go out to the farm and do absolutely nothing or I could wait in town for Dad to finish on the building site and I could walk past the building site. He'd throw me a bunch of coins and then he'd pick me up after he finished work at the arcade. Yeah. So that's what I did almost every single chance I got. Yeah, I would yeah, have no brand for a kid yeah. as well. 100%. Yeah. yeah, go home and do nothing or go to the arcade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tough. and that was when you know dad would you know chuck me a couple of bucks worth of 
you know, cash and 20 cents for three credits and shit. Like you were, you could have been there all day with a couple of bucks from your parents. It's awesome. Can't do that anymore. Unless you play Double Dragon and then you're out of there by, you know, 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah, go, it's go, funny go. though, because to, to your parents, it would have been like a $2 babysitter for three or four hours. Yeah. Because, you know? and it was like a safe place. Like the, the, it was, you know, the, the people, it was actually in the back of a video store, Video Easy. And, um, like the people that ran the video store knew that there were lots of kids out the back. So if they saw suspicious activity and because it was a small, like I grew up in a small town, even though it was on a farm, it was a small town. Like if they saw a suspicious guy walk out the back, like they'd go out there and say, Hey, what are you doing? Like, why is an adult out here? And if you know what I mean? So it was completely safe. And even back then, I mean, I'm talking the early to mid eighties, even back then was like, people didn't think about getting abducted or anything like that. Like yeah, you were just walking time, around the back streets then. at all times. It's just a different era, but my mother but used to just... kick my ass out of the house and be like, "Do not come home until six. It's dark. Yeah. Just leave. <laughs> just leave. Go <laughs> somewhere <laughs> else. They would make me leave. It's not like, not like how it is now." Yeah, we used to get kicked out of the house, and we and they'd yes, say you're not too much you can't come games. home until the street lights came on. Yeah, my mom said you play too much games, and you got to go outside and play, which is fine. I'm glad we did, but like all I did is get in trouble. I should have just played games. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> yeah, but you made a good point about the fact that you know back then arcades were a better quality of gaming experience over the the um the home yeah, console. There was always a big gap. Yeah, and like you know, sitting in the Daytona USA game machine and the, and the seat was always an experience, and the sounds and the and I don't know, just the whole thing. Like when you walk into an arcade, it was just yeah. like, uh, oh man, yeah, I can still sound, hear uh, the Daytona USA like music playing because that, yeah. that would that would be echoing throughout the whole arcade. Or you had the um, I think I've mentioned this before, like uh, the Colossus roar from the X Men like fighting game. Yeah, dude, I love that game. Colossus Roar, and that would always echo throughout the, the arcades as well. So fighting well, games. The, uh, sorry. When you got a high score and you got to put your name in the machine and everyone got to see your name, you know. I would always put ass just because it was always like, <laughs> you know, I, I was like a dumbass, like a like 10-year-old, and I thought ass was so funny, like to be at the top of the, the leaderboard. <laughs> The, 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 the Daytona game always reminds me of pool comps because when that was big out here, I was going around sort of hustling pool around all the pubs and every pub had the Daytona. So you'd be in a pool comp playing pool, having beers, and that game would be blaring around the, the atmosphere of the pub. And so while you're waiting for your match on the, on the pool comp, you'd be inevitably challenging someone on Daytona. <laughs> Drunk. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, let's get into some show and tell, shall we? All right, right. So we like to show off some pieces from our collection. We've got some stories attached to them. Now, TJ, I know you got a really interesting piece to show tonight. You want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, you have to bear with me. It's not long-winded, but I've got to explain it. So, one of the things I was always interested in was uh, unique storylines, niche markets. Um, history behind certain games or certain things in the collecting in our business and one thing I got I came across by accident was the I was looking into what a game had to do to become a greatest hits slash essentials mm -hmm. title and so I started looking into that and I can't remember the figures. They have changed over time, but it's always been something like they had to sell 100,000 copies in three months to be eligible for greatest hits slash uh, essentials. So the more I looked into it, the more um, I discovered that because everyone knows that Australia has platinum and essentials of North America's greatest hits, um euro has the same as australia basically and the japanese have their own uh brand of of greatest hits but almost every region has their own specific greatest hits and the more i delved into it the more i discovered that only one game of, of the entire 
And I'm not speaking of this as gospel because I, if so, if someone proves me wrong, I'll be like, beautiful. There's a there's a nice ad addition to the collection. But as far as I can tell, and I've researched this quite a bit, there's only one game that has appeared as a greatest hit in every single region in the world. And uh, Figs knows it. I don't know if uh, Joe Rad, if Figs has filled mm. you in, if anyone wants to um, have a quick guess what that what it might be. So we're talking Which PS3 game? games. Which PS3 game is the only game to appear on every greatest hits from every region around the world? Sounds like a future quiz question. <laughs> For real. Yeah. I think I have. Is it Elder Scrolls? No. Mm. Metal Gear Solid Five. So I'll I'll tell you. It is God of God of War Three. That makes sense. So. God of War 3 was released, and as I said, the, the criteria for greatest hits is it's got to sell a certain amount of games in a certain amount of time. To I believe the PS3 was um, 500,000 for essentials, and then it was a million for platinum. That's why there's more essentials than platinum. Mm. Yeah. So you have God of War, the, the vanilla normal edition, and in Australia we had uh, platinum and essentials, which there's the... Oz Power Platinum and Essentials. Can everyone see that? All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we crossed over to America. America only had the greatest hits. So it was eligible for greatest hits. While we're over near there, we go to Brazil and we have Favoritos. And this is the small one of the smallest markets for greatest hits titles. It only had, I don't know what it was, maybe 30 it was like 60 or something couple of guys have got the full sets but so it was eligible for that those are awesome that set looks then so we cool. go to obviously we'll go to japan because everyone knows that japan has one as well so it was eligible for the japan version and then uh figsy has got a couple of photos in europe so europe has so far i've found three there is a, a europe um essentials there's a euro platinum and this German Essentials, which it's the same thing, but it's got the different little uh, logo down the bottom for the variant collectors. So there's three different Essentials with three different logos. There's a Platinum for... I don't own... I own these. They're with John Cox, but I just don't have them on me. That's why I'm showing photos. But there's a Platinum. And then I've recently found this one, which is a Euro uh, uh, Portugal exclusive with a little Portuguese flag printed on the cover, which is kind of... Kind of unique. And then finally, we have um, uh, China received their own English Chinese copy of the uh, greatest hits. I think that's called um, PlayStation 3 the best, which is what the, the Asian versions were. So PlayStation 3 the best. And then in, um, uh, I, I think it's Korea, correct me if I'm wrong, Figsy. Um, I can't remember, but we had the big hit series, which is this yeah, one. Is this Korea? Yeah, yeah, that's South Korea. So we had this one, which is like the platinum version of Korean big hits, and finally the Korean big hit variant. That's cool. So it is the only game that appears on every single greatest hits region uh, that there is. The only one that comes close is. The Last of Us, but it doesn't appear on the one of the Korean versions and um, another one that escapes me. But, yeah, God of War is <laughs> – there's an argument to be made that it's the most anticipated game ever because it's uh... – <laughs> Which is the reason why God of War 3 got the version. <laughs> yeah, fucking, fucking oath. Um, yeah, I just thought – I really I really enjoy those sorts of little uh, backstories behind um, – uh, behind certain games, and I did tell Figsy so because I'm not a collector anymore, we don't know what we're going to do. But I'm giving away this collection to someone at some stage, all of them. So I don't know whether it'll be Figsy mentioned maybe a quiz. I'd prefer it to go to a God of War fan, um, but I'll work with Figsy over the next couple of weeks and we'll try and work out a uh, a way that we can run a competition where someone wins all of these random, obscure greatest hits titles of God of War 3. I would say have like a, a quiz, but it all be God of War focused. That's what we were yeah. thinking, making a God of yeah. War style quiz. Yeah. 
quiz or yeah. something. Like yeah. So, but yeah, I just found that really interesting that um, that one game features on every. I fe- first of all, I found it interesting that every region has a greatest hits of their own, and then. Uh, as far as I can tell, God of War 3 is the only one out there that appears on every single one of them. I didn't know that. So, yeah. Kind of cool. And that's also the only... Really bit. Right? I like that. So it just really shows that God of War 3 was popular in every single country it came out in. Yeah, it's, it, that's why I say there's yeah, an argument so to, to be made that it's the most anticipated game on the PS3 system because it literally had to have sold very quickly a very large amount of money and which it has done all over the world. Yeah. So, yeah. interesting little backstory. Yeah, I still, I, as good as the new God of War games are, the first three are the best. I don't give up. The I remember playing the, the first one on the PS, like the PS2 demo. You played the first stage. Dude, that was incredible. I played it over and over again. It was just that one stage over demo. and over until it came out. <laughs> the game is amazing. From yeah. yeah, up next, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So I just picked up this game. So if I get any questions wrong about it, it's not my fault. I'm just kidding. (laughs) So the first game I I said, I've been picking up random PS2 games lately. I just like stuff I wanted, not, not going hard or anything, but every once in a while, I'll grab it a few that I want. And this is one that I wanted for a while. So I grabbed it. Uh, it's the it. Aqua Teen Hunger Force Zombie Ninja Pro Am. Um, I'm not sure how to this. Do you guys know? Are anyone here familiar with Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Anyone watch the show besides me? Have you guys ever seen it? Nope. Oh man. So it's a really amazing cartoon that was on Cartoon Network. Um, I can't even like describe it because it's insane. But it's about like a meatball and a milkshake and a thing of French fries that live in a house and they're like. <laughs> on a crime fighting team but they don't fight any crime and then they have a neighbor who's like this guy from new jersey and it's it's named carl i can't describe it it you have to watch it it does i can't it's not gonna make any damn sense but it's uh it's based on that show it's really funny and this is like a golf game but you also like murder things and fight things it, it looks completely wild and it looks really funny and um you know it's like a cell shaded game and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like I said, I love Aqua Teen Hunger Force, so I had to pick it up. So, yeah. so I grabbed that. Um, next, I got this one just because it was hella cheap. I already owned this on PS4, but the Pocky and Rocky, Rocky. Reshrine for the Switch. It was on sale for like 17 bucks or something like that. And uh, that's a really good price for a Switch game. And, um, you know, you want to talk about speculating or whatever. The SNES game, Pocky Rocky, is very expensive. Uh, so I can't imagine this will be worth less than $17. So I definitely picked it up uh, to have it in my Switch collection. It's so really it's good. That theme too. So it's the same people yeah. that did Africa on PS3, for example. It, it's, a, it, it, it's a really fun game if you've never played it. But it's, um, it's awesome. It's a really good one. So this mm-hmm. obviously I had to pick up just because... I'm committed, and if they release any more VR games on PSVR 1, I have to purchase them because I have a full set. So I'm going for every single one that comes out. Yeah. So this is the new one um, that just came out. It's called Desperate Vlad Office Stock. Um, it's like a first-person you know, action shooting type game, it looks like. Um, kind of trippy, like... Um, kind of artsy, the fighting style. I don't know how to describe it. Like stylized, I guess. But uh, it looks really good. Uh, I probably won't open this just because I play on PSVR 2 mostly now. But, uh, oh, they doing cool. a... I didn't think they would keep making VR 1 games with VR 2 out now. There's still a few trickling out here and there. Yeah. Maybe it was in development a long time ago and they just took yeah. a while to get it out or something. Probably. Have um, they or are they doing a VR for PS5? Yeah. Yeah, they already do. They have PSVR 2. It came out. Yeah, and they have a. I'm I'm pretty sure there is a physical PSVR two copy that came out for this as well. If you okay, do want sense. to pick it up for PS, so I'll probably end up picking it up for a PSVR two. But from a development perspective, they would have had to make two different games if that's the case. Um, I believe the technology is quite different, um, which is why a lot of the companies didn't port PSVR one games directly to PSVR two because it is that like the so. 
the interface between the two units is just totally different. Like the way it works with the camera and VSR one on the light system. And then the new one, it's all sensor based. It's like completely different. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm assuming I know nothing about making games, but I'm sh it's definitely different enough. I could see it being a pain in the ass. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, can I just tell you that my PSVR headset two, I already like broke it after like six months. Did I tell you this already? Yeah, I beat yeah. Saber to death. I played, so I, I got Beat Saber and I put like 70 hours into it in like, I don't know, like a month and a half. <laughs> I just like, I played so much and I killed the headset. It like died. So I replaced it and got a new Did one. you walk outside without the headset on going, oh, this world's weird. No, but I did have like a permanent <laughs> fucking ring around my face. I looked like a raccoon, you know what I mean? Um, uh, no, but so no joking i did start i got like i started to get like break acne because i was sweating so much wearing the damn thing so oh, much shit. so i had to like get like my skin routine going wait so and, uh, you broke it did did sony like replace it for you yeah yeah they did oh okay they, they gave me a refurbished unit which so far has worked okay but it's actually given me a couple problems so just so you know i'm a little disappointed with the psvr2 build quality right now because they're not i'm having some trouble and i'm not i'm not mean to them or i don't drop them or damage them or anything like i'm just using them huh. and it should be fine my psvr1 no problems so anyway um besides point so this i absolutely was like really actually looking forward to this and i'll probably end up picking it up on the switch at some point too but I don't know when. Maybe I dream it'll get cheaper. It probably never will, but um, it's Tunic. I don't know if you guys have heard of this game. Oh nice. yeah, love this little cover. I have. I I, oh. I just got that too as well. I'm I'm still waiting okay, cool. on the manual though. Wait, on the what? On the like the hardcover manual. Is there supposed to come with more stuff? You mean like a different edition? You mean or? Oh, on I think it came from Iron Gamer or something. Or Fan Gamer? Yeah, what Fan Gamer put that out, but. They also have like uh, the hardcover like instruction mm -hmm. manual. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, okay, yeah, and it looks like uh, like a Zelda, uh, yeah, like kinda, the original yeah. like NES uh, Zelda. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like a manual that fits inside the game or anything. I, I, it, well, there's a new one in that case too. Oh, okay, maybe that's a different one. So you must be talking about like an extra thing. Either way, um, it's like a top down. Um, Zelda type games is an inspired game with like, you know, with, with modern graphics. Uh, it looks gorgeous. I haven't played it yet, but uh, I've been looking forward to it for a long time. I've heard really good things about it. And um, like I said, I'll probably get it on the Switch too. But uh, this is a really nice addition, by the way. It comes with like a nice slip cover. It's nice and heavy. It's got some beef to it. So, yeah. Yeah, you should play that immediately. That's, an, that's a really great game. Uh, bro. The backlog is infinite, but I do want to play it immediately. But we'll see. This is what I'm going to be playing immediately. I'm going to be playing this because I can't wait. I actually paid full price for this, Ooh. and I really want it to play it. So, it's, uh, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, I haven't heard too much. Is that kind of like the Friday the Thirteenth game? It's exactly like that. It's like oh. an online only experience, kind of like yeah. Dead by Day later Friday the Thirteenth or hunter you know predator hunter, meant to have done a really good job replicating like the movie and it scenes from the movie and it's mm -hmm. really scary and you feel like you're helpless and because they got a fucking chainsaw and everything so i've heard good things about it um so there's not a lot of horror movies that actually i think are scary but the texas chainsaw massacre i think that isn't actually scary like i i you know because it's not you know, Freddy and Jason are like magic. You know, that doesn't scare me because it's like so ridiculous. But some lunatic with a chainsaw, that's totally possible. Some asshole with a chainsaw just chasing me around trying to chop me up. That's scary <laughs> as hell. I could totally see that in some crazy freaking house down in the middle of nowhere, a bunch of weirdos. I don't know. It's got enough realism to it where I always found it to be legitimately but based on a real story, too. Yeah, it's it's sort of yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> which is even scarier, loosely yeah. based. Yeah, based on a real story these days. But uh, <laughs> I, I've I've have been watching people play it online, and it um, it it looks scary as hell, man, and it looks really fun. So I'm looking forward to playing it. And uh, yeah, that was my last pickup. Nice, Jason. What do you go first for show and tell, man? All right. So was were we supposed to just do pickups, or was it? Uh, Bit of everything. I don't pick new games up these days, so I just show old games. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, it could be whatever you want to show up. I just I, pick I definitely don't pick any games up. So, All right, so as a, everybody could see, I'm a huge. Uh, let me move out of the way. I'm a huge Dark Souls fan. 
Um, and I have more like, over, yeah, I have more like over here. Like, uh, I don't know if you could see the huge statues. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Yeah. Not worthy. Massive. <laughs> Holy crap. So <laughs> for this one, and I just, now I have like the lightsabers going on again. Uh, I have this obscurity. Ooh. So this I found locally many years ago. Like I didn't grade this. I, I'm not really into grading games literally at all. But I found this locally at a store and they had no idea what the price was of it because none were like on eBay or anything. And I offered them, I believe, 75 or $80. Like I, I highballed them because I wanted I wanted it. And they were like, okay. And this is the Amazon German exclusive steelbook for Bloodborne. It's really hard to make it out, but it does say Bloodborne like across across it, and it's called the Saw Cleaver edition. Okay. Huh. And yeah, and it, this is like, although I have like a bunch of Dark Souls stuff, this is like like my main my main piece. Like I'll probably never get rid of this. Um, but yeah, like if you could find one online. Uh, there you go. If you could read that, Saw Cleaver Edition Steel. Yeah, have you heard what's was... happening with this piece lately? What's that? So this particular steel book, uh, a lot of people have been faking it, and you can go online and buy a fake copy for like fifty dollars. So unfortunately, it, there's that many fakes out there that it's lowered the price of the original. That so sucks. It, yeah. So well, that's if you're in the market that was... for a copy, be sure that it does have that holographic bloodborne. It actually has a manual inside too, a piece of paper. So if you yeah. don't have the well, piece of paper, it mightn't be real. Well, this and one's graded. I mean, I know, I know it's graded, but it's also sealed as well. You, you got yours before they were being fake. It's only been a few yeah. years. Oh, yeah. I've had that since like 2000. When did Bloodborne come out? Like 2015? I think I got that in 2016. Yeah. Um, and it was and so what sort of store was it in, Joe? Just like a mum and pop store. Yeah, yeah it, it was, was just one only one through Amazon in huh. Germany. Yeah. So someone just literally just decided to go in there and sell parts of their video games. They, they had other stuff too that I bought. Um that there was like a, a Dark Souls 2 like armor black armor edition that was also graded. I bought that as well from them, but mainly I wanted that Bloodborne steel book. Did you know about that when you saw it? When you seen it, sorry? No, I had no idea. I didn't even know like there was another steel book because like the US got like their own steel book, but it was like it was really lame looking, if I'm being honest. And then I seen that, I was like, oh, that's cool. I want that. How much is it going for, if you don't mind me asking? Um, so in Europe you can get it for about two hundred um euros, but depends on the country. Like in Australia, you're looking around five hundred dollars for it. I'm sure America would be around the same. Gotcha. So anytime anyone asks, you know, you talk about how much anything costs, I just assume in Australia it costs like a third more. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> I have a weird glare going on. Although the uh, the Japanese changeover at the moment is ridiculously good. The yeah, so you can get your advantages. Like it'll leave a bit bad time to. A good time to buy or a good time to sell, and then yeah, the, the, the Australian buy. dollar to yen is really good at the moment. I got to move for this next one. Yeah, right, Joe. I love Solaire. That's so cool. Oh yeah, uh, this is probably my, head. that's probably like my newest piece. Uh, that was from San Diego Comic Con. It was like an exclusive, um, and. It was two fifty, but I did not pay that. I, I paid like five hundred bucks for it. Um, yeah, and then I have like more over there, but that's not what I was gonna show. Oh boy! You feel the weight of that. <laughs> the Any, anything you have, any anybody anything in your collection that you store in a box, a box in a box, you know it's something nice. Oh, oh beautiful! Uh, the twentieth anniversary PS Four. Uh, still sealed. Yeah, that's sealed. And it's too. like that's original gorgeous, shipping bro. box. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I was gonna get like an acrylic case made for it, but I just never got around to it. So I just keep it in its box because I don't. It's original ever... styrofoam. Yeah, I'm I don't sure. ever plan on selling it. And yeah, the twentieth anniversary. I believe they made what was it like thirteen thousand five hundred copies or something like that, or maybe it was even lower than that. I really don't remember now. 
But it's so beautiful. It really is. Uh, I don't want to make PS5. Yeah, I, I love the controllers they came up with them for uh, being, too. Out to like IGN and like all the video game websites, and there was people like not knowing that this was like a slip cover, and they were like ripping it. And yeah, they were just getting oh. torn apart in the comments. Um, it, it cringes me watching some people open stuff, and it's like they so wait. Like, so open. That's a slip cover that goes over the console. No, just like to the to the box. Oh, okay, right, yeah. And then there's a box inside a box. There's a few yeah, PS3 yeah. yeah. Well, a couple of the consoles you got off me things, I think they're the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then, yeah. Or, yeah, there it is. I have a couple of those dots. Yeah, yeah, they look really nice. Mm -hmm. Although the console actually does come with a controller that's a little different than this one that was sold separately. I did pick this up as well. I have a bunch what? of PS4 controllers. Like I have like the Last of Us Part Two, uh, the 500 million. Um, What's the difference between that and the console controller? So on the little touchpad right here, on the one that came with the console, it says 20, like it has like two and then like the circle and then um, a bunch of like uh, anniversary logos like right here. Um, but on the regular one, like this one right here, it's just like, it's just a bunch of dots. Okay. Thank you. Right. And still then, both really cool. Yeah, and then lastly, and this is kind of like sentimental. Um, it's almost like a priceless thing, and that is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And this was the very first PlayStation game I ever got. Now I had played PlayStation. Well, why that? <laughs> yeah, I had, I had played PlayStation before, like because my friends got got one. My brother, who you know didn't live with uh, me at the time. He got one. So I always got to play them, but I didn't have one. And my grandma, my grandma, um, got me this. And yeah, and I'll never sell it. It's like completely priceless uh, to me. Uh, so is that is that part of the photo? I know that I remember you posted a photo of like you on Christmas Day or birthday getting the PS One. Yeah, this is it. Is that is that part of that photo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. cool. Yeah, I think I was like ten years old, or yeah. There's a really good. Joe's got a really awesome photo of him opening a PS One back in the day on Christmas Day. It's really yeah, awesome. and this is the game I got with. You got with it. Yeah, that's cool. freaking sick, man. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, I love the way to introduce the PS One. But um, going into Castlevania, uh, Symphony of the Night, I ended up while I was in Japan. I picked up the Japanese version, which cool. I. Absolutely love artwork's the awesome. Yeah, they always have the best artwork. The they really do. Yeah. Um, and then I also picked up the Sega Saturn version that's still sealed. Very cool. Um, and if you've never played the Sega Saturn version, it, it's almost the same. It's it it has extra levels in the game itself. However, the game lags. So rather than like smooth frames per second, it's like jittery. So. Huh. Yeah, and I think that is my show and tell for today. That's Good cool. stuff. Did you uh, do you do you uh, pick up any of the new releases, the limited run ones? I did. The, so the night and think, hold on, give me one second. Yeah, you're not done. Show me more Castlevania stuff. I love Castlevania. <laughs> and uh, just so you know, um, I did order all four covers of that damn game. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find that photo on just Facebook, but it's just full of memes. There's hundreds of them. <laughs> All right, so since we're talking about Castlevania, so we have the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is the copy that everybody got off Limited Run Games. However, Best Buy got a got better the, cover, got way the, better cover. Own wow. cover, and it's actually way better looking in my opinion. Hell yeah. No, I agree, dude. I don't know if you can make that out because I know my camera's kind of dark, but. No, I did the same thing, Joe. I bought both because I ordered the limited run one and then I saw the Best Buy one and I'm like, oh my God, that's so much better. What and then we get into dude? the anniversary collection oh, that's nice. collector's edition, which like it lights up. Wow. Oh, hold on. I don't know if you could hear that. The soundtrack. 
Well, it, it, it plays uh, it plays like the music to Castlevania. Huh. That's crazy. Joe, yeah. I found that photo too, by the way. Oh, you did? Oh, look at that. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. No. So, that's, an old, that's an old school gamer right there. Yeah, that was a meme I made of opening my PS1 and then, of course, opening my PS5, even though I had my PS5 like a month prior to that photo being taken. <laughs> you almost look more excited in the PS5 photo than the PS1 one. And then I, uh, lastly, with the, the Castlevania games for at least PS4. Oh, wow, man. You um, got the big one. That's the Castlevania beautiful. Requiem collection. Yeah, which is essentially just Castlevania Symphony of the Night mm -hmm. and Rondo of Blood, but on disc because Symphony of the Night's been on you know the PS3 store, I think, and PS4 store digitally, but it's never been physically released yeah, yeah. Until, up until now. And um, is that sealed, Joe? Um, what's up? Is that sealed? Uh, I ended up opening it because yeah. like I wanted to see what the steel. Oh. I, I will open it really quick so I could show you the steel book because it's probably the best part of the, the whole thing. But it comes with <laughs> the, the like save logo. Huh. It reminds me of the Undertaker's collector's edition. Yeah, kind of. Huh. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of like doing an unboxing, but. No, man. Yeah, we no, live for this. Fine. We, we, we live for this. For we, exactly. We want yeah, to see the almost, insides uh, of expensive collector's editions. <laughs> Of authenticity. I can see the number it shuns. <laughs> yeah. 1461. Out of 9100. Uh, huh. And then, of course, you get. That's the, cool. I, I actually have that edition because they sold yeah. that separately. So I actually do have that. And so. then it comes with a variant cover. Ooh, oh, does it really? Cool. Yeah. That is cool. It's actually two. Oh. So, <laughs> that's the run. But... Hmm. And I then know that. the other side, you have Symphony of the Night. What? That's that's cool. That reverse cover because that's the OG one. I love it. Yep. What the heck, mm -hmm. man? I don't want to know this. Put it put it away. I now I regret you. Wow, I didn't need to know that. Look at that steel book. Probably one of my favorite steel books. Yeah, but I don't know if it's worth waiting two years for. Probably not, but no. uh, and then you know. Well, for a, if you're if you're a symphony, if you're not collecting anything else and you're a fan of the series, mm -hmm. that's the good thing about cutting down a collection and focusing on your true love. Like you can forego expensive games that you're not a fan of the series, and you can spend your money and focus on a series that you really, yep. really love. Mm -hmm. I. Adore Castlevania. Um, yeah, I played too. it like on the Nintendo uh, with my brother uh, when I was a little kid, and then of course I got Super Castlevania on uh, the Super Nintendo. I played the N sixty four games, which were kind of trash, and then of course I got my PS one, and then got right into Symphony of the Night. I did play a lot of the Game Boy uh, games, but there's so many of them, um, and they're mm. very like kind of like niche in my opinion. Did you like where it went with the PS three and that. What's that? Oh, I hate it. I hated the P. You know what? So I didn't mind the first, uh, I forget what it was called. What, what Lords of Shadows. Lords of Shadows. I was like, okay, it's a God of War kind of like clone ripoff kind of thing. I liked where the story was going. And then Lords of Shadow 2 came out and then it just like took a nosedive. Yeah, like, wasn't one of them kind of like in the in the vein of like um the Sands of Time style games, the what, what Prince, of they, Persia. The Prince of Persia, wasn't one of them like they were just a kind of a kind of clone of Prince of Persia bouncing around and doing weird shit that wasn't well, Castlevania. <laughs> Lords of Shadow 2 just like completely shit on the franchise so bad that there hasn't been a Castlevania game since. Yeah. However, however, what has happened is, and I'm a huge fan of them. Uh, like, if I showed you my trophies, I play a lot of Metroidvania games. There's been an, in, in, yeah, there an insane so increase ones. of Metroidvania games, not only on the PS4, but especially PS5. And uh, most of them, like 90% of them, are all amazing. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Yeah. Dead Cells, Castlevania. Dead Cells, like, platinumed. And that took me a long time to platinum. Like, Hell yeah. Hours, because it's all random, like, generated kind of thing. Yeah, it uh, takes forever just to get all the items and to kill yeah. all of them. 
Yeah. Over. Uh, so just to finish up with this, because it's not done, it does come with like a shield and a sword, but it comes with like, a little thing data saved because the box, if you played Symphony of the Night, you could, it has like a little notch right there and you can put the data saved up there. So. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. Huh. Wow. But that is my PS4 Castlevania collection. So he smashed us in the um, trivia and then smashed us in the challenge. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I got a couple of things to show. Good. They're not cool Good. with the Castlevania collection, but they are interesting enough themselves. So the first piece is actually a PS1 title. So this is Tomb Raider, the collector's edition. Now, this is for PS1. It only got released in Australia and New Zealand. And there are 10,000 of them. They're all numbered. So this is number 2,559 out of 10,000. But what's interesting about them is they came in PS2-style cases. So you got Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3 in these PS2-style cases, but for the PS1. So they're the only PS1 games that come like this. <laughs> Super cool. And then the games just inside, you've got the PS1 manual. So it's, it's really cool. It's like the... This is what you're going to be right. getting for our next system, but we're going to get a little bit early here. So it's not really a piece that I was after, but um, I worked at a pawn shop, and when I left the pawn shop, this was my going away present, so I was pretty happy with this one. So for that reason, it's going to stay in the collection. That's cool, man. <laughs> really interesting cases. Yeah, it's just an interesting piece for PS1. You don't really get many PS1 collector's editions. Are they official? Yeah, one, sorry? Are they official? Yeah, it's official. Yeah, official yeah. Release. And yeah. now the next one is a PS3 collector's edition. It's one of my favorite ones. Um, it's really hard to find complete. Usually you just find the um, box that comes inside it. So it's the Grand Theft Auto 4 Special Edition. And it comes with a... Um, is it a, a safe? Yeah, it comes with a safe inside it. So this is a really heavy safe that's inside it. But finding the box is the hardest part. It's a super cool collector's edition. It's a red spine one, so it was a pretty early release. Such a strange size box, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull the safe out just so you guys can see it. Apparently it's fireproof. I don't know how true that is, but apparently it's fireproof. I believe that. Like, this is strong. <laughs> so Grand Theft Auto 4. I've got the can we all, can we all agree that the, the PS3 had the weirdest... Collectors edition. The best. <laughs> so many cool things. Now, what would now if I was sixteen? What do you think I would use that for? Weed. Weed. Percent. I'm glad everybody immediately knows best. what that thing is. Really <laughs> it comes with a fucking vest. <laughs> and then we've obviously got a copy of the game. Um, for some reason, there's two copies in this collector's edition. We've got a soundtrack. And then there's an art book in here as well. So it's a pretty cool collector's edition. But yeah, it's a it's a duffel bag. Okay, so it comes with a, a duffel bag. But yeah, this is heavy duty. <laughs> that's, a, that, that's a throwback to the... Didn't you have a, a, a lockbox like that in your save room in the game? When you, I in think your that's what it thing? was. Yeah. Where that's it how you like save the game. By, there was that lockbox on your bedside table or something. It's been a long time since I played Grand Theft Auto 4. Oh, that game annoyed the shit out of me. Hey, cousin, you want to go bowling? <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen any of the um, Starfield gameplay? So Starfield from last night, officially, if you're a streamer, you're allowed to show gameplay or all reviews came out. And um, reviews actually seem pretty good. Like I watched a review of a guy that played 80 hours of the game. Um, he obviously he dove into both sides of the argument. Um, so like the game isn't hundred percent polished. There's going to be glitches. Some of the um, missions weren't that exciting. But overall, like it's a pretty good experience. Uh, it sounds like the game has been released in AAA quality form. It's you know it's not like a Fallout seventy six or anything. So next week it's going to be free on Game Pass. I'll be playing it next Friday. I'm pretty excited. I mean, it is a Bethesda game, so expecting it to be bug free was. <laughs> yeah, come on, that would be a letdown in, in a way. You can't you can't spell Bethesda without plenty of bugs. Yeah, <laughs> they put the B in Bethesda. Uh, one thing that really surprised me is it actually runs really well on the Xbox Series S, 
which has oh. given me hope for my PC to be able to run it really well as well. <laughs> this game has been talked about for literally a yes. decade, right? Yeah. yeah. This is Xbox's like, this is our game, guys. You're going to be buying our consoles for this game. This is the thing. So I want to uh, see, uh, and I'm not really heavily into like the news of Starfield. I know everybody's talking about it, but all the gameplay I watched that looked like No Man's Sky to me honestly so i just yep. didn't have any interest of like keeping up with the game like as far as news and everything goes and it, i'm sure it's just pretty much fallout or skyrim in space essentially but the gameplay i seen um uh, looked like no man's sky so didn't they uh, they're just releasing a no man's sky update aren't they or a follow -up yeah no man's sky or... gets updates constantly constantly but wasn't I there like a big one up, uh release recently yeah. like i think it's called like echoes or something but yeah. it's a huge update did I anyone think... here get into that game like big time i bought it in 2016 and it was terrible yeah i did I, when it first came right. out um i platinumed it and then i didn't can anyone anymore. hear these can anyone hear these budgies going off is that oh, yeah. anyone yeah the whole time like yeah like so i played the game um when it first came out, I opened it, and then I didn't touch it for years until it came out on PS4, and it had all <laughs> updates. It was like a almost like a completely different game at that point. Same had so much hype in it coming same out. Same concept of like you have to get like you know materials to get to other planets and stuff, but like the gameplay wise and everything that they added to it made it like almost like a new game. Mm. Yeah. I heard something interesting on Starfield that um so comparing it to say Zelda um, Tears of the Kingdom, where Zelda's a big open world that you can walk ten meters and find something, and you can yeah. walk twenty meters that way and find something. They say in Starfield it's not like that. It's a very open world, not much going on, but the the missions are really good. So you're really focused on continuing that mission, going to the next mission. You're not getting sidetracked or anything yeah. like that. But the guy I listened to was 70 hours in and he still hadn't touched all the content yet, which gives me hope. I, I love Fallout. I love Skyrim. So I'm, I'm going into this game with expectations that it's going to be like that, not like Fallout 76. Here's, here's the thing. Um, Xbox kind of needs that one big game because when if you look like, okay, since, since the Xbox Series S and X have come out, Xbox hasn't released any like huge first-party titles. Uh, I think this year they had Redfall, and that got slammed in reviews, like yeah. horribly slammed in reviews. And then I really can't think of anything else that it like released. Everything like, they like, release is shit. Like, they need this game to be good. Third party. Um, but, I mean, I, I don't know if you've been keeping up with the news, TJ, but they bought uh, Bethesda. Microsoft bought Bethesda. Yeah, I knew that. Um, and now... I think, I don't know if it's closed yet. I don't think it has, but they bought ABK, which is Activision, Blizzard, and King. So Microsoft is officially going to own the Call of Duty franchises and every Activision IP out there, including World of Warcraft, uh, Candy Crush, and whatever else. And I think they spent like $80 billion on the company. And they're still trying to pass the laws in certain countries. It's like getting denied in the UK and different well, things like that. It, it, my biggest gripe with this... And what law? So, what's up? So they basically have to like approve this deal in every country because it seemed like the UK says no because it's a monopoly. So oh, okay, right. Yeah. That's why it's not getting through in it's the UK. Really, it's, it's really not a monopoly yet. Yeah, And I say yet because... And maybe I'm overstepping uh, saying like this but uh what it's doing is causing uh like everybody wants to buy everybody now it kind of opened like the floodgates of like oh well microsoft is going to spend 80 billion dollars on a game developer well, so how the fuck did ea get away with it for so long because that's all they did was buy out a developer and rename them ea san diego or some shit yeah yeah you're not wrong um but like now all these other companies are eating up all the smaller developers. Endeavor like, Group, Tencent, they're all just Tencent. buying everything. You know, you know, the thing is, I don't I don't care that Tencent's doing that because Tencent uh isn't making all of like prior 
uh, third party games exclusive to a platform. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like Tencent uh, is just a, a publisher, really. Microsoft has bought Bethesda. So all the Doom games I own on PS4, which I have a shit ton of Doom games on my PS4, just on my PS4. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven Doom games on my PS4. The next Doom game is not going to be on PlayStation. Guaranteed. It's crazy to think about. Like, yeah. Uh, same thing with Wolfenstein, you know? It's not just not on PlayStation. It's not on Nintendo either. No. <laughs> like, it's not on PlayStation or Nintendo, and you're talking about Doom. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, that, so, kind of, that doesn't – it never makes made sense to me where if a publisher, like, a console exclusive games, like, it's – you're literally throwing away money. Why would they – it just it never – under- They get that much money to only sell it on that console that it's worth it for them. And I'm, I'm sorry I got on like a little rant. We could talk more about Starfield, but I also wanted to talk uh, Cyrus, uh, that Sea of Stars. Um, I have that downloaded. I have not played it yet, but I heard it is one of the best RPGs that is released in a very long time. Yeah, it looks really good. Well, I've guys, been planning to wrap this show up. We're two hours, 15 minutes in. TJ, Joe, it was great to have you both back on the show. Guys, yeah, it was fun, guys. guys. Together it was really awesome. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to support the podcast for free, uh, you guys can leave us five star reviews over on iTunes or Spotify. It really helps the show. Leaving a like, those little things really help. So if you guys like the show, other people that don't listen to it might like it as well. Yeah, sure. Um, you, know, got, you, you know, I actually donated money to your podcast the other week. You scumbag. <laughs> I <laughs> seen that. Super chat, and you were just like, <laughs> I was like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll help my crowd. I'll have a fun. Stay, hey, safe travels, Joe. Stay oh, safe, yeah. brother. Oh yeah, I'm leaving. I was gonna say, uh, maybe I'll come back on and I could show off more of my collection. But yeah, I'll be leaving in the three weeks. But I'll be back on again when I get when I get home. Yeah, I'll have a good Stay trip over there, man. Stay safe. Thanks, yeah, um, man. PJ, Bye. Joe. Where can everyone find you guys? Uh, Wrestle Savage, brother, by the side of the ring on the curtain. <laughs> go and check it out it's good stuff it's good fun but yeah other than that uh we're on wrestle savages on tiktok it's on instagram we just hit uh 14 000 followers on the gram nice. kind of exploded uh we're on youtube we're gonna have uh, our own web uh, website shortly we just registered the business we're gonna be dropping uh limited run um uh, wrestling t-shirts so if there's any wrestling fans out there we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of stuff and um that's about it. The, my my normal Instagram for TJ is just probably the most boring. I just use it to send memes to Joe, really. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, but like, I mean, you can go on my YouTube channel if you really want. Uh, if anybody in the chat has not seen my YouTube channel, just look up Collector Fanatic 101. I got it in the links below, guys. So if you haven't subscribed, yeah. go check um, it out. But yeah, I'm, I'm just on Facebook, just shooting the shit, sending memes, making memes. Can I just can I just say too? Just you just made a comment earlier about we were talking about the um, the Japanese covers. Your yeah. video was the first. It was the first time I ever learned that there were uh, alternative covers in Japan, in Japan because you had an alternative cover for uh, the Shadow um, Strider. No, no, no. The the one where the guys got Shadow the, of the Dam. Shadow of the Damned. You had the Japanese yeah, cover variant oh, of that, yeah, which yeah. was so much better. Yeah. And I was like, oh, so they make different covers over there. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. Japanese covers are all so much better than oh, what I see. Yeah. Mo- most of them are better, and they're cheaper. Doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, guys, thanks, everyone, for watching. Um, stay tuned this Sunday. We've got Radical Reggie coming back on, so that'll be another awesome show. And yeah, stay safe, everyone. Thanks, Jigsy. Thanks, Joe. Yep. Night, everybody.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.